the moment aliens realized they messed with the wrong planet. The vastness of space stretched out in all directions, an infinite black void speckled with distant stars. Somewhere within this cosmic expanse, a small, unassuming planet orbited a yellow star Earth. For eons, it had gone unnoticed by the rest of the galaxy, its inhabitants blissfully unaware of the grander stage on which the universe played out. But that was about to change. Year 2147. Deep within the Milky Way, in a sector controlled by the Xenurians, a highly advanced and expansionist alien race, a blip appeared on a sensor array. It was faint, almost negligible, but it was there. The sensor operator, a creature with iridescent scales and multifaceted eyes, blinked in surprise. The signal was ancient primitive by Xenurian standards, but it had been transmitted with intent. The signal, a beacon of sorts, carried a simple message, we are here. The Xenurian High Council convened to discuss this unexpected discovery. A holographic image of Earth rotated slowly in the center of the chamber, its blue oceans and green continents casting a serene glow. A pre-FTL civilization, one of the council members hissed, its voice like sandpaper on metal. They have only just begun to reach beyond their atmosphere. Their technology is rudimentary, another added. Barely capable of space travel, they pose no threat. Then why bother with them, asked a third, its tone indifferent. There are more pressing matters to attend to in the Helios Cluster. The Xenurian overlord, a towering figure draped in regal armor, leaned forward. Because, Counselor Vyachker, it is our duty to bring order to the galaxy. Even the smallest spark can ignite a flame. We will snuff out this spark before it has a chance to grow. There was no further debate. The decision was made. The Xenurian fleet would travel to this insignificant planet and make an example of it, demonstrating the futility of resistance to the rest of the galaxy. Earth, 2148. The sky over New York City was a clear, crisp blue, the kind that made you forget about the worries of the world. People went about their daily routines, unaware of the storm that was brewing just beyond their reach. In the heart of Manhattan, the United Nations building was a hive of activity. Representatives from every nation were gathered for an emergency session, the first of its kind in decades. The reason, a mysterious object had been detected just beyond the orbit of Mars, moving toward Earth at an alarming speed. It decelerated the moment it entered the solar system said Dr. Elena Reed, a leading astrophysicist, addressing the assembly. Her voice echoed through the chamber, charged with a mix of excitement and fear. This is not a natural phenomenon. We are looking at the first confirmed evidence of extraterrestrial intelligence. The room buzzed with nervous energy as diplomats exchanged uneasy glances. The world had always wondered if they were alone in the universe. Now, it seemed, they had their answer. As the debate continued, the object now confirmed to be a massive spacecraft entered Earth's orbit. It hovered silently, a monolithic presence that cast a shadow over the world below. Panic spread like wildfire as cities across the globe went into lockdown, people retreating to their homes, glued to their screens, awaiting the inevitable. Then, without warning, the ship's underside began to glow. A beam of light shot out, descending upon the unbuilding, the light was blinding, forcing everyone to shield their eyes. When it finally dimmed, a figure stood in the center of the chamber. It was tall and slender, its skin a shimmering silver that seemed to shift with the light. Its eyes were large and black, devoid of any discernible emotion. The room fell silent as the alien surveyed its surroundings. I am Herax, envoy of the Xenurian Empire, it spoke, its voice resonating within the minds of all present. We have come to offer you a choice. Submit to the will of the Empire and be spared, or resist and face annihilation. The words hung in the air like a death sentence. The representatives were paralyzed, their minds racing. This was not a negotiation. It was an ultimatum. The fate of humanity hung in the balance. Dr. Reed, regaining her composure, stepped forward. What do you want from us? Herax turned its gaze to her its expression unreadable. Your compliance. You will dismantle your military forces and surrender all scientific and technological data to the Empire. 
In return, you will be allowed to live under our protection as a vassal state. And if we refuse? The alien's eyes narrowed, its voice cold and unwavering. Then you will be destroyed. A heavy silence fell over the chamber. The weight of the decision was crushing, but in that moment, something unexpected happened. A sense of defiance began to take root. The people of Earth had always been a stubborn species, unwilling to bow to threats. As the seconds ticked by, the resolve of the human spirit began to harden. The unsession adjourned, but the decision was unanimous. Earth would not go quietly. Military leaders from around the world were brought into the fold, and preparations for a coordinated defense began. For the first time in history, humanity was united against a common enemy. The Xenurian ship remained in orbit, monitoring the planet below. Herax had made its demands clear, and now it awaited humanity's response. It didn't have to wait long. Within hours, the first wave of missiles was launched from strategic points across the globe. They arced through the sky, leaving trails of fire as they ascended toward the alien vessel. The world watched with bated breath as the warheads closed in on their target. But just as they were about to make contact, a shimmering field of energy enveloped the Xenurian ship. The missiles detonated harmlessly against the barrier, their explosions lighting up the sky in a brilliant but futile display. The ship remained unscathed. Inside the UN's war room, General Marcus Steele slammed his fist onto the table, frustration etched into his features. We need to find a way to penetrate that shield, or this fight is over before it even begins. Dr. Reed, who had been poring over data, looked up with a glimmer of hope. It's a standard energy shield, likely designed to deflect conventional weaponry. But if we can generate an electromagnetic pulse strong enough, we might be able to disrupt it long enough for our weapons to get through. How long would it take to set that up? Steele asked, his voice tense. Hours, maybe less if we can repurpose existing technology. Do it, Steele ordered. We don't have much time. As Earth's forces scrambled to implement Dr. Reed's plan, the Xenurians decided that enough time had passed. Herax transmitted a final warning to Earth, but it went unanswered. The Overlord's patience had run out. From within the depths of the Xenurian ship, massive ports opened, revealing rows of sleek, ominous drones. They descended upon Earth like a swarm of locusts, darkening the skies as they approached major cities. Each drone was armed with plasma weaponry far more advanced than anything humanity had ever faced. The first strikes were devastating. Cities were reduced to rubble, their inhabitants caught in the crossfire. The world watched in horror as landmarks that had stood for centuries crumbled under the onslaught. But humanity was not defenseless. Fighter jets and drones engaged the invaders in the skies, and ground forces mobilized to protect what remained of the cities. The air was filled with the sounds of battle explosions, gunfire, the whine of engines pushing beyond their limits. In the midst of the chaos, Dr. Reed's team completed their work. A massive EMP device, cobbled together from parts scavenged from military bases and research facilities, was ready. They had one shot, and failure was not an option. The device was activated, sending a powerful electromagnetic pulse rippling through the atmosphere. For a brief moment, the lights across the globe flickered as the pulse raced toward its target. The Xenurian ship shuddered as the EMP hit, its shield flickering before collapsing entirely. On the ground, cheers erupted as the once invincible ship was suddenly vulnerable. Earth's forces seized the opportunity, launching a second wave of missiles, this time loaded with nuclear warheads. The warheads streaked through the sky, leaving bright trails as they approached the now exposed ship. In a blinding flash, they detonated against the hull, tearing through the Xenurian vessel with unimaginable force. The explosion lit up the night sky, visible from every corner of the planet. The Xenurian ship, once a symbol of unstoppable power, now became a fireball plummeting toward the Earth. It crashed into the Pacific Ocean, sending tsunamis roaring toward the coasts. But the threat was far from over. As the dust settled, humanity began to regroup. The destruction of the Xenurian ship was a significant victory, but it was only the beginning. 
the Zenurian Empire, far from being defeated, would not take this loss lightly. High above Earth, in the depths of space, the Zenurian fleet began to mobilize. Thousands of ships, each bristling with weaponry far more advanced than anything the humans had faced so far, prepared to descend upon the small, defiant planet. Back on Earth, Dr. Reed. And General Steele worked tirelessly, coordinating with the remaining global leaders to prepare for the inevitable invasion. The world's brightest minds came together, pooling their knowledge and resources to develop new technologies and strategies to defend against the impending assault. We need to think beyond conventional warfare, Dr. Reed said during a briefing. The Zenurians have technology that surpasses ours by millennia. We need to innovate, adapt, and use every advantage we have, including those that are unique to Earth. As humanity scrambled to prepare, the first wave of the Zenurian fleet entered the solar system. Unlike the initial ship, these vessels were built for war sleek, angular designs bristling with weaponry and cloaked in the same energy shields that had protected the first ship. But humanity had learned from their earlier encounters. The EMP devices that had been used to disable the first ship's shields were quickly adapted and distributed to key defensive positions across the globe. In addition, a new weapon had been developed, one that combined the destructive power of nuclear warheads with a concentrated EMP burst, designed to penetrate the Zenurian shields and deliver a devastating blow. As the fleet approached, Earth's forces were ready. Missile silos opened, launching wave after wave of the new warheads into space. The Zenurian ships, detecting the incoming threat, activated their shields, but the missiles were designed to counter them. With precise timing, the warheads detonated, sending out pulses that disrupted the shields just long enough for the nuclear explosions to rip through the enemy vessels. The battle in space was fierce, with both sides taking heavy losses. The night sky was lit up with a fiery debris of destroyed ships, a grim reminder of the high stakes. On the ground, humanity watched, holding their breath as the fight for their survival played out above them. But even as the Zenurian fleet suffered losses, their numbers were overwhelming. For every ship that was destroyed, two more seemed to take its place. It became clear that Earth could not win this war through attrition. They needed a decisive victory something that would force the Zenurians to reconsider their campaign. As the battle raged on, Dr. Reed and her team made a startling discovery. Analysis of the Zenurian technology recovered from the downed ships revealed a critical vulnerability. The Zenurian fleet was operating under the command of a central AI system housed within the flagship, a colossal vessel that dwarfed the others in the fleet. If they could find a way to disable or destroy this AI, it could throw the entire fleet into disarray, giving humanity a fighting chance. But the flagship was heavily defended, surrounded by an armada of warships that would stop at nothing to protect it. A direct assault would be suicide. They needed a different approach. In a bold move, Dr. Reed proposed a plan that involved infiltrating the flagship with a small team, using a captured Zenurian shuttle to avoid detection. Their mission, to plant a virus within the eye's core that would disable it from the inside. General Steele, known for his bravery and strategic acumen, volunteered to lead the mission personally. He assembled a team of elite soldiers, handpicked for their skills and experience in covert operations. Dr. Reed, despite her lack of combat experience, insisted on joining the mission. Her knowledge of the Zenurian technology would be crucial to the success of the plan. As the team prepared for their mission, the tension was palpable. Everyone knew the risks they were walking into the heart of the enemy's stronghold, with no guarantee of success or survival. But they also knew that failure was not an option. Under the cover of the ongoing battle, the team launched in the captured shuttle, slipping past the Zenurian defenses undetected. The flagship loomed ahead, a massive structure that seemed to pulse with malevolent energy. As they approached, the ship's docking bay opened, allowing them to enter. Inside, the team moved swiftly, navigating the labyrinthine corridors of the Zenurian flagship. The atmosphere was thick with tension as they encountered resistance Zenurian soldiers, armed with plasma weapons, patrolled the ship. But the human team, utilizing their superior training and the element of surprise, 
managed to neutralize them quietly. Finally, they reached the AI core, a massive chamber filled with alien machinery that hummed with power. At the center was the AI itself, a towering construct of crystalline structures and glowing orbs. It pulsed with a rhythmic light, like the beating of a heart. Dr. Reed approached the core, her hands steady despite the gravity of the situation. She began to interface with the alien technology, working quickly to upload the virus that would cripple the Xenurian fleet. The team stood guard, their weapons ready, as they waited for her to complete the task. But just as she was about to finish, alarms blared throughout the ship. The Xenurians had discovered the infiltration, and reinforcements were on their way. The team braced for a fight, knowing that they were outnumbered and outgunned. As the first wave of Xenurian soldiers entered the chamber, the room erupted into chaos. Plasma bolts filled the air, and the human team fought with everything they had, buying Dr. Reed the time she needed to complete the upload. With a final keystroke, the virus was unleashed. The AI core flickered, its light dimming as the virus spread through its systems. The Xenurian soldiers faltered, their movements becoming erratic as the eye's control over them wavered. But the victory was not without cost. General Steele, leading the defense, was struck by a plasma bolt. He fell to the ground, his body racked with pain. Dr. Reed rushed to his side, but there was little she could do. Get out of here, Steele gasped, his voice weak. Finish the mission. Tears filled Dr. Reed's eyes, but she nodded, knowing that he was right. The team had done what they came to do. Now, they had to escape before the ship's self-destruct sequence, triggered by the eye's collapse, obliterated everything. The team made their way back to the shuttle, the corridors of the flagship shaking as explosions began to tear through the ship. The Xenurian fleet, now in disarray, struggled to regain control as the eye's influence waned. Ships veered off course, crashing into each other or drifting aimlessly through space. As they launched from the flagship, the team looked back just in time to see the colossal ship erupt in a massive explosion, a bright flash that momentarily outshone the stars. The Xenurian fleet, now leaderless and disorganized, began to retreat, their once coordinated assault collapsing into chaos. On Earth, cheers erupted as the retreat of the Xenurian fleet became apparent. Humanity had done the impossible, they had faced an enemy far more advanced and powerful, and emerged victorious. But the victory was bittersweet. The cost had been high millions of lives lost, cities reduced to rubble, and the planet scarred by the ravages of war. General Steele, a hero who had given everything for the survival of humanity, was among the fallen. As the remnants of the Xenurian fleet fled into the depths of space, a sense of solemn triumph settled over the Earth. Humanity had survived, but they knew that this was not the end. The galaxy was vast, and there were other threats out there, waiting in the darkness. But now, they were ready. The war had changed everything. The nations of Earth, once divided by borders and ideologies, had come together in a way that had never been seen before. The scars of the conflict would take time to heal, but the bonds forged in the crucible of war would endure. In the months that followed, a new global alliance was formed the United Earth Defense Force UDF comprised of the best and brightest from every corner of the planet. Its mission was clear, to defend Earth from any future threats and to ensure that humanity would never again be caught off guard. Dr. Reed, hailed as one of the heroes of the war, was appointed as the chief scientist of the UDF. Her work with Xenurian technology had opened up new possibilities for humanity's future. Advances in energy, propulsion, and weapon systems were developed and for the first time, humanity began to look beyond its own solar system, preparing for the next chapter in its history. But even as they rebuilt and looked to the stars, they did not forget the lessons of the war. The price of survival had been steep, and the memory of those who had sacrificed everything would be honored. In the depths of space, far from the wreckage of the Xenurian fleet, a lone Xenurian vessel drifted, its communication systems damaged but still functional. Inside, a transmission was being sent to the heart of the Xenurian Empire. The overlord's voice crackled through the static, filled with anger and disbelief. They were supposed to be insignificant. How could this have happened? 
a cold, mechanical voice responded. The humans are more resourceful than anticipated. They have demonstrated a capacity for resistance that was unforeseen. We must reconsider our approach. The overlord's voice turned to a growl. No, we will not be deterred by a single defeat. Prepare the fleet. We will return. And this time, we will ensure that there is nothing left of this earth to defy us. The mechanical voice paused, then spoke with an eerie calmness. Perhaps, my lord, we should consider a different strategy. The humans have shown that they can be formidable. It may be more prudent to study them further to learn their strengths and weaknesses before. We strike again. The overlord was silent for a long moment, contemplating the suggestion. Finally, it spoke, its tone icy. Very well, but make no mistake, we will have our revenge. As the transmission ended, the Xenurian ship resumed its course, disappearing into the void. The war was over, but the conflict was far from resolved. Humanity had won the battle, but the war for survival was just beginning. On Earth, life slowly returned to a semblance of normalcy. The cities were rebuilt, the dead were mourned, and the survivors began to pick up the pieces of their lives. But the memory of the war lingered, a constant reminder of the fragility of their existence. The Yudif grew in strength, becoming a symbol of humanity's resolve to never again be caught unprepared. New technologies were developed, ships were built, and for the first time, humanity began to reach out into the galaxy, not as conquerors, but as explorers determined to find their place among the stars. Dr. Reed, now a revered figure, led the charge in exploring the remnants of the Xenurian fleet that had been left behind. The technology they uncovered would propel humanity forward, giving them the tools they needed to face whatever challenges lay ahead. But even as they looked to the future, they remained vigilant. The warning had been clear the Xenurians would return, and when they did, humanity would be ready. For now, Earth was safe. The moment when the aliens realized they had messed with the wrong planet had passed, and humanity had emerged victorious. But the galaxy was vast, and the future was uncertain. And so, with a determination forged in the fires of war, humanity prepared for whatever came next, knowing that the fight for their survival was far from over. Year 2151 Three years had passed since the Xenurian fleet's retreat, and Earth had transformed. The scars of war were still visible, but the human spirit had proved resilient. Cities had been rebuilt, new technologies had been integrated into daily life and the global community was more united than ever before. However, the shadow of the Xenurian threat loomed large, a constant reminder that the peace was fragile. In orbit above Earth, the newly constructed space station, Helios, served as the headquarters of the United Earth Defense Force Yudif. From this vantage point, the planet below appeared serene, a world at peace. But the men and women aboard Helios knew better. They were the sentinels, ever watchful for the return of the enemy. Inside the command center, Dr. Elena Reed studied a holographic display of the solar system. A faint, nearly imperceptible blip had appeared on the outer edge of the Uit cloud, a distant, icy region at the very edge of the solar system. It was a signal, weak but distinct, and it matched the energy signature of Xenurian technology. Dr. Reed's brow furrowed as she analyzed the data. It's them, she muttered to herself. She had been expecting this, but the timing was sooner than anticipated. General Marcus Steele's replacement, General Amanda Carter, a seasoned military leader with a reputation for her calm demeanor under pressure, stood beside Dr. Reed, her arms crossed. What are we looking at, Doctor? It's a scout, Reed replied, her voice tinged with concern. The Xenurians are probing our defenses, testing our response. They're preparing for another invasion. General Carter nodded, her expression grim. Then we need to be ready. How long until they arrive in force? Dr. Reed shook her head. It's impossible to say. Could be months, could be years. But one thing is certain they won't make the same mistakes as last time. Carter's jaw tightened. We need to hit them first, catch them off guard before they can regroup. Do we have anything in the works that can give us an edge? Reed's eyes lit up with determination. 
As a matter of fact, we do. We've been working on something, a project that could change the balance of power. Deep within the bowels of the Helios station, a team of scientists and engineers labored tirelessly on Project Prometheus. The project was the brainchild of Dr. Reed, inspired by the technology salvaged from the Xenurian wreckage. It was humanity's answer to the overwhelming power of the Xenurian fleet a weapon that could strike fear into the hearts of even the most advanced civilizations. Prometheus was not a single weapon, but a suite of advanced technologies designed to enhance Earth's defensive and offensive capabilities. The centerpiece of the project was the Prometheus Cannon, a massive energy weapon capable of harnessing the power of a small star. Mounted on Earth's newly constructed Dreadnought-class starships, the Prometheus Cannon could deliver a concentrated beam of energy capable of obliterating even the largest Xenurian warships. But the Prometheus Cannon was just the beginning. The project also included the development of advanced stealth technology that could render ships invisible to Xenurian sensors, graviton shields capable of withstanding the most powerful energy attacks, and artificial intelligence systems that could match the Xenurian AI in both strategy and execution. The stakes were high, and the pressure was immense. The Udif knew that the fate of humanity rested on the success of Project Prometheus. The scientists worked around the clock, pushing the boundaries of human ingenuity. As the weeks turned into months, the first prototype of the Prometheus cannon was completed. It was installed on the Udif Achilles, a new dreadnought-class ship that represented the pinnacle of human engineering. The ship was a behemoth, bristling with weaponry and armored with the latest graviton shields. Its sleek, angular design was a stark contrast to the bulky, utilitarian ships of the past. General Carter and Dr. Reed stood on the bridge of the Achilles, watching as the final preparations were made for the ship's maiden voyage. The plan was simple, take the fight to the Xenurians before they could launch their full-scale invasion. Are we ready? Carter asked, her gaze fixed on the view screen. Dr. Reed nodded. The crew is trained, the systems are online, and the Prometheus cannon is fully operational. We're as ready as we'll ever be. Good, Carter replied, her voice steely. We're going to show the Xenurians that humanity isn't just going to roll over and die. We're going to make them regret ever underestimating us. The Udif Achilles, accompanied by a fleet of Earth's most advanced warships, launched from Helios, heading for the edge of the solar system. Their mission, to intercept the Xenurian scout and, if possible, locate and engage the main fleet before it reached Earth. The journey was tense, the crew fully aware of the danger they were heading into. But there was also a sense of pride of belief that they were part of something greater, a fight not just for survival, but for the future of humanity. As the fleet neared the Uat cloud, the Achilles sensors picked up the faint energy signature of the Xenurian scout. It was a small vessel, barely more than a probe, but its presence confirmed their worst fears the Xenurians were indeed preparing for another invasion. General Carter gave the order to engage. The Achilles moved into position, the Prometheus cannon charging as it locked onto the scout. A moment later, a blinding beam of energy lanced out from the ship, striking the scout dead center. The Xenurian vessel disintegrated instantly, its remains scattered across the void. But the destruction of the scout was just the beginning. Almost immediately, the Achilles sensors detected multiple contacts emerging from the Uic Cloud Xenurian warships, dozens of them, converging on the human fleet. It's a trap, Carter muttered, her mind racing as she assessed the situation. They were expecting us. Dr. Reed's eyes widened in realization. They lured us out here to weaken Earth's defenses. We need to retreat and warn the others. But retreating was easier said than done. The Xenurian fleet closed in, their ships moving with terrifying speed and precision. The battle began, the void of space filled with the flashes of energy weapons and the explosions of destroyed vessels. The Achilles fought valiantly, its Prometheus cannon cutting swathes through the enemy fleet, but the odds were overwhelming. For every Xenurian ship they destroyed, more seemed to appear from the darkness. The human fleet was being surrounded outmaneuvered by the superior Xenurian forces. On the bridge of the Achilles, General Carter made a fateful decision. 
We need to break through their lines and make a run for it. Focus all firepower on the lead ships and prepare for an emergency warp jump. The crew scrambled to carry out her orders, the ship's weapon systems roaring to life as they unleashed a barrage of firepower at the Xenurian fleet. The Prometheus cannon fired again, vaporizing a massive Xenurian cruiser and creating a gap in the enemy's formation. Now, Carter shouted. The Achilles engines roared as the ship surged forward, breaking through the gap and leaving the battle behind. The rest of the human fleet followed, some ships taking heavy damage but managing to stay in formation. As they cleared the enemy lines, the warp drives activated, and the fleet disappeared into the safety of hyperspace. The Achilles and the remnants of the fleet emerged from hyperspace near Mars, battered but alive. The mission had been a partial success they had destroyed the Xenurian scout and confirmed the presence of a larger invasion force, but the cost had been high. Many ships had been lost, and the Xenurian fleet was now closer to Earth than ever. General Carter and Dr. Reed returned to Helios to deliver their report to the Utif High Command. The mood in the command center was somber as they outlined the situation. The Xenurians were coming, and they were coming soon. We have to assume that the Xenurian fleet will arrive within days, Carter said, her voice firm despite the tension in the room. We need to prepare Earth's defenses and ready every ship we have. The High Command, made up of leaders from every nation, nodded in agreement. The time for debate was over. This was a fight for survival. As preparations began, Dr. Reed received an unexpected visitor, Admiral John Wolfe, a grizzled veteran who had served as the commander of Earth's naval forces during the first Xenurian invasion. Wolfe had retired after the war, but the new threat had brought him back into service. I hear you've been busy, Wolfe said with a grin, his voice rough from years of barking orders. Prometheus, huh? Sounds like you've been working on something big. Dr. Reed smiled despite the gravity of the situation. It's our best shot at stopping them, Admiral, but we need every advantage we can get. Wolf's expression turned serious. You're right, and I think I can help with that. Before I retired, we were working on a little project of our own, something that could turn the tide. In our favor. Dr. Reed raised an eyebrow. What kind of project? Wolf leaned in lowering his voice. Let's just say it's a way to level the playing field. Meet me in the hangar tomorrow morning, and I'll show you. The next morning, Dr. Reed met Admiral Wolf in the hangar as promised. He led her to a section that had been cordoned off, guarded by Yudif soldiers. Inside, a large object was covered by a tarp. Wolf nodded to one of the soldiers, who pulled the tarp away, revealing a sleek, black starfighter. This, Wolf said, his voice filled with pride, is the X-1 Wraith, the most advanced starfighter Earth has ever built. It's fast, it's stealthy, and it's equipped with some of the most powerful weapons we've ever developed. Dr. Reed circled the Wraith, her eyes wide with admiration. It's incredible, but how can a single starfighter make a difference against a fleet like the Xenurians? Wolf grinned. It's not just the Wraith. We've got a whole squadron of them, and they're all equipped with quantum cloaking devices that make them virtually invisible to enemy sensors. We've also fitted them with nanofusion missiles weapons that can penetrate even the toughest Xenurian shields. Dr. Reed's mind raced as she considered the possibilities. This could be exactly what we need. If we can hit them hard and fast, disrupt their formation before they reach Earth. Wolf nodded. That's the idea. We strike first, take out their command ships, and sow chaos in their ranks. With the wraiths leading the charge, we might just stand a chance. As the Xenurian fleet drew closer to Earth, the Yudif prepared for what could be the final battle for humanity's survival. Every available ship was mobilized, and the X-1 wraiths were prepped for their mission. The mood was tense, the air thick with anticipation and fear. General Carter stood on the bridge of the Yudif Achilles, which had been repaired and rearmed for the coming battle. Dr. Reed and Admiral Wolfe were with her, finalizing the details of the plan. This is it, Carter said, her voice calm but firm. We hold the line here. If we fail, there's no fallback, no retreat. 
Earth is depending on us. The Achilles led the fleet into position, taking up a defensive stance between the approaching Xenurian fleet and the planet. The Wraith Squadron, under Admiral Wolf's command, moved ahead, cloaked and ready to strike. The Xenurian fleet appeared on the sensors, a massive armada that seemed to stretch across the stars. It was an awe-inspiring and terrifying sight, but the men and women of the Udif stood their ground, determined to protect their home. As the Xenurian ships closed in, Admiral Wolf gave the order to attack. The wraiths decloaked and launched their missiles, targeting the Xenurian command ships. The nanofusion warheads detonated with devastating precision, tearing through the enemy's shields and ripping the ships apart. The Xenurian fleet staggered, their formation disrupted by the sudden assault. The Achilles and the rest of the UDF fleet seized the opportunity, opening fire with everything they had. The Prometheus cannon fired again and again, each shot vaporizing a Xenurian warship in a blinding flash of energy. But the Xenurians were far from defeated. They regrouped quickly, their remaining ships surging forward in a desperate attempt to break through the human lines. The battle raged on, both sides taking heavy losses as the void of space became a graveyard of destroyed ships. On the bridge of the Achilles, General Carter barked orders, her voice cutting through the chaos. Focus fire on their lead ships. Don't let them breach the perimeter. The Uda fleet fought with everything they had, the battle reaching a fever pitch as the Xenurians pressed their attack but the wraiths continued to strike from the shadows, their cloaking devices allowing them to slip past the enemy's defenses and deliver crippling blows. As the battle dragged on, it became clear that the tide was turning. The Xenurian fleet, battered and bloodied, began to falter. Their ships were no longer moving with the same precision, their formations breaking apart under the relentless assault. Finally, with one last devastating shot from the Prometheus cannon, the Xenurian flagship was destroyed. The remaining Xenurian ships, leaderless and in disarray, began to retreat, fleeing into the darkness of space. The battle was over. The Xenurian fleet had been defeated, and Earth had once again survived an existential threat. But the cost had been high. The void was filled with the debris of countless ships, both human and Xenurian, a grim testament to the ferocity of the conflict. On the bridge of the Achilles, there was a moment of silence as the crew processed what had just happened. They had won, but the price of victory weighed heavily on them. General Carter exhaled, a mix of relief and exhaustion in her eyes. We did it, she said quietly. Earth is safe, for now. Dr. Reed nodded, her expression somber. But we can't let our guard down. The Xenurians will come back, and next time they'll be even more dangerous. Admiral Wolf placed a hand on her shoulder. Then we'll be ready. We've shown them what we're capable of, and we'll keep pushing the boundaries of what humanity can achieve. They may have advanced technology, but they've underestimated our resolve. In the days that followed, the people of Earth celebrated their hard-won victory, but there was also a collective understanding that this was only the beginning. The war with the Xenurians had changed everything humanity had proven that it could stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the most powerful forces in the galaxy, but they also knew that the battle for their survival was far from over. The Udif began the process of rebuilding, both in terms of their fleets and their planet. The losses were great, but so were the lessons learned. Project Prometheus was expanded with new ships and weapons being developed to ensure that Earth would be ready for whatever came next. Dr. Reed and Admiral Wolf continued to work closely together, leading the charge in advancing humanity's technological capabilities. The Wraiths became the new standard for Earth's starfighters, and the Prometheus Cannon was adapted for use on more ships. As for General Carter, she was hailed as a hero, her leadership during the battle cementing her place in history but she remained humble, always reminding those around her that the victory was a collective effort a testament to what humanity could achieve when united against a common threat. And so, as Earth entered a new era, the people looked to the stars not with fear, but with determination. They knew that the galaxy was filled with dangers, but they also knew that they had the strength to face them. For now, the moment when the aliens realized they had messed with the wrong planet had passed 
and humanity had emerged victorious. But the future was vast, and the challenges ahead were many, and as they prepared for whatever came next, the people of Earth knew one thing for certain, they would be ready. Year 2155. Four years had passed since the last battle with the Xenurians. The scars of war had healed, and humanity had grown stronger, more vigilant. The United Earth Defense Force UDF had expanded its reach, establishing outposts on Mars, Europa, and beyond. The Earth had entered a new golden age of exploration, driven by the need to prepare for the inevitable return of the Xenurians. But as humanity pushed further into the cosmos, they discovered that the galaxy was far more dangerous than they had ever imagined. In a distant star system, far from the relative safety of Earth, a youth of exploration vessel, the Endeavor, was on a routine mission to survey a newly discovered planet. The planet, designated HX-113, was a lush world with a rich atmosphere and abundant water, a potential candidate for colonization. Captain Elena Ross, a seasoned explorer with a passion for discovery, led the mission. The Endeavor's crew was a mix of scientists, engineers, and soldiers, all of them eager to uncover the secrets of this new world. As the Endeavor entered orbit around HX-113, the crew marveled at the planet's beauty. Vast oceans stretched across its surface, dotted with lush green islands. Thick clouds swirled in the atmosphere, casting shadows over the land below. This place is incredible, said Dr. Leo Matsuda, the ship's chief scientist, as he studied the planet's readings on his console. The atmosphere is almost identical to Earth's. This could be the breakthrough we've been looking for. Captain Ross nodded, her eyes fixed on the view screen. Let's not get ahead of ourselves, Leo. We've seen worlds that look perfect from orbit, only to find out their death traps on the surface. We'll need to be thorough. The Endeavor descended towards the planet, entering the upper atmosphere. The ship shuddered slightly as it pushed through the dense air, but the ride was smooth overall. As they broke through the clouds, the crew got their first close-up view of the surface. Lush forests covered much of the land, with rivers and lakes sparkling in the sunlight. In the distance, they could see towering mountain ranges, their peaks capped with snow. It was a paradise, seemingly untouched by civilization. The Endeavor landed in a wide clearing near the edge of a forest. The landing site was carefully chosen based on scans that showed minimal signs of dangerous wildlife or unstable terrain. The crew disembarked, stepping onto the soft, green grass. Dr. Matsuda knelt down, scooping up a handful of soil and letting it run through his fingers. The composition is rich, full of nutrients. This place could support life-human life for generations. Captain Ross smiled but there was a cautious edge to her expression. We'll see. Let's set up base camp and begin the surveys. We'll split into teams Matsuda. You'll lead the botanical and geological surveys. Lieutenant Harper, you take your team and scout the area for any signs of local wildlife or potential threats. The crew moved quickly, setting up equipment and establishing a perimeter around the landing site. As the sun set, casting long shadows across the landscape, they settled in for their first night on HX-113. But unknown to them, they were not alone. As the night wore on, the crew of the Endeavor went about their tasks, unaware of the eyes watching them from the darkness. Deep within the forest, something ancient and powerful stirred a presence that had lain dormant for millennia, now awakened by the arrival of these new intruders. The first sign that something was wrong came during the early hours of the morning. Corporal Diaz, one of the soldiers on perimeter duty, was patrolling the edge of the camp when he noticed a faint, pulsing light coming from the forest. It was an unnatural glow, shifting in color and intensity. Command, this is Diaz, he whispered into his comms. I've got something weird out here, some kind of light in the trees. I'm going to check it out. Copy that, Diaz, came the reply from the command tent. Be careful. Don't engage unless necessary. Diaz moved cautiously towards the light, his rifle at the ready. As he drew closer, he could feel a strange sensation in the air, a tingling, like static electricity. The light grew brighter, almost blinding, and he had to shield his eyes. Suddenly, 
The light vanished, leaving only darkness. Diaz lowered his hand, blinking in confusion. The forest was silent, the only sound the rustle of leaves in the wind. Then, without warning, something struck him from behind. He barely had time to react before he was lifted off his feet and hurled into the trees. Pain shot through his body as he crashed to the ground, his vision swimming. Gritting his teeth, Diaz tried to push himself up, but his limbs felt heavy, unresponsive. He reached for his comms, but before he could call for help, a shadow loomed over him. He looked up, and his eyes widened in terror. Standing above him was a creature unlike anything he had ever seen a towering figure, humanoid in shape, but with a face that was a mass of shifting, swirling light. Its body seemed to be made of some kind of metallic substance, reflecting the moonlight in strange, distorted patterns. The creature extended a hand, and Diaz felt a surge of energy course through him. His muscles seized up, and he gasped for breath as his vision darkened. The last thing he saw before losing consciousness was the creature's glowing eyes, staring down at him with an intelligence that was both alien and terrifying. When Corporal Diaz failed to report in, Captain Ross knew something was wrong. She immediately ordered a search team to sweep the area where he had last been seen. Sergeant Kiera Ford, a no-nonsense soldier with years of experience, led the team into the forest, their weapons at the ready. As they advanced, they found signs of a struggle broken branches, scuffed earth, and drops of blood. But there was no sign of Diaz. Captain, this is Ford, she radioed back. We've found signs of a fight, but no Diaz. There's something else to something that doesn't look natural. We're sending you a live feed. Ford activated her helmet cam, transmitting the images back to the Endeavor. The feed showed the strange, pulsing light that Diaz had seen, still faintly glowing in the trees. Captain Ross watched the feed with a growing sense of unease. What the hell is that, she muttered. Dr. Matsuda, who had joined her in the command tent, frowned as he studied the images. It's some kind of energy field, but I've never seen anything like it. It's almost alive. Alive? Ross turned to him, her expression hardening. What are we dealing with here, doctor? Matsuda shook his head. I don't know, captain. But whatever it is, it's not natural. We need to be extremely cautious. Ford's voice crackled over the comms. Captain, we found something else. It's Dias, but he's... There was a pause, and when Ford spoke again, her voice was uncharacteristically shaky. You'd better see this for yourself. Ross and Matsuda quickly made their way to the location, escorted by a squad of soldiers. When they arrived, they found Ford and her team standing in a clearing, their faces pale. Diaz lay on the ground, unconscious but alive. His body was covered in strange, glowing patterns like tattoos that pulsed with an eerie light. His breathing was shallow, and his skin was cold to the touch. What the hell happened to him? Ross whispered kneeling beside Dias. Matsuda examined the patterns with a mixture of fascination and horror. It's some kind of energy infusion. Whatever did this to him, it's left a mark. We need to get him back to the ship, Ross said, her voice firm. Ford, get your team to carry Dias. We're returning to base. As they made their way back to the Endeavor, the sense of unease grew. They had come to HX-113 hoping to find a new home for humanity, but instead they had awakened something ancient, something powerful. And whatever it was, it was watching them. Back aboard the Endeavor, Diaz was placed in the medical bay, where Dr. Matsuda and his team began running tests. The glowing patterns on his body continued to pulse, but despite their best efforts, they couldn't determine what was causing them. As the hours passed, Diaz remained unconscious, his condition stable but unchanging. Captain Ross and Matsuda stood by his bedside, discussing their next steps. We need to get off this planet, Ross said, her voice tense. Whatever did this to Diaz is not something we're equipped to deal with. Matsuda nodded, but his expression was conflicted. I agree, but we also need to learn as much as we can about this phenomenon. If we leave now, we might be missing a crucial opportunity to understand something truly unique. 
Ross shook her head. Our priority is the safety of the crew. We can't risk more lives. Before Matsuda could respond, Daius suddenly gasped, his eyes snapping open. The glowing patterns on his skin flared brightly, and he let out a scream of agony. The entire medical bay seemed to pulse with the same eerie light, as if the ship itself was resonating with the energy coursing through Daius's body. Get the medics in here now, Captain Ross shouted, rushing to Daius's side. Matsuda quickly began to adjust the instruments, trying to stabilize him. But the readings on the monitors were unlike anything he had seen before. Dias's scream turned into a deep, guttural growl as his body convulsed violently. The patterns on his skin began to shift, moving as if they were alive, spreading across his chest and up his neck. His eyes, now glowing with the same alien light, locked onto Ross. Captain, Dias rasped, his voice distorted, as if two voices were speaking at once. They are coming. Ross felt a chill run down her spine. Who's coming? Diaz. What are you talking about? Diaz's body tensed again, his muscles straining against the medical restraints. Though watchers, they see, they know. Before Ross could ask anything else, Diaz's body went limp, the glow fading from his eyes. The patterns on his skin slowly dimmed, leaving only faint traces behind. The monitor showed that his heart rate had stabilized, but he remained unresponsive. What just happened? Ross demanded, turning to Matsuda. Matsuda shook his head, his face pale. I don't know, but whatever it was, it wasn't just a physical reaction. It's like he was, connected to something, something not of this world. Ross took a deep breath, trying to process the situation. The Watchers, have you ever heard of anything like that? Matsuda frowned, his mind racing. The name doesn't ring a bell, but the way he said it, it's like there's some kind of entity, or a collective intelligence, and if they're coming... Ross finished the thought, her expression grim. Then we're in serious trouble. The next day, the Endeavor remained grounded on HX-113, its crew on high alert, Captain Ross convened a meeting in the ship's war room, bringing together the senior officers, Dr. Matsuda and Lieutenant Harper. We're dealing with something we don't fully understand, Ross began, addressing the group. Diaz mentioned something called the Watchers. We need to figure out what they are and how to stop them if they pose a threat. Lieutenant Harper, who had been silent until now, spoke up. Captain, during our initial survey, we picked up some unusual energy readings deeper in the forest. They were faint, but they matched the signatures we saw around Dias. I think they might be connected. Ross nodded, considering this. If those readings are linked to whatever did this to Dias, we need to investigate. But we do it carefully. No one goes out alone, and everyone is armed. Matsuda leaned forward, his expression serious. I suggest we also bring equipment to analyze the energy field directly. If we can understand its properties, we might be able to protect ourselves against it. Agreed, Ross said. Harper, you'll lead the team. Matsuda, you're with them. Ford, take point. I want this done quickly and efficiently. The team geared up, tension palpable in the air, as they prepared for their mission. They knew they were venturing into unknown territory facing an enemy they couldn't see or understand. As they moved deeper into the forest, the air grew thicker, the light dimmer, as if the forest itself was closing in around them. The strange energy readings intensified, and soon they found themselves standing before a massive stone structure, half buried in the earth. The structure was ancient, covered in strange, indecipherable symbols that glowed faintly with the same light they had seen on Diaz's skin. What is this place? Ford muttered, scanning the area with her rifle raised. Matsuda approached the structure, his scientific curiosity overcoming his fear. This architecture, it's nothing like anything we've ever encountered. These symbols, they seem to resonate with the energy field. It's like this structure is alive. As Matsuda examined the symbols, he felt a strange pull, as if the structure was calling to him. His fingers traced the patterns, and the symbols began to glow brighter, 
the energy field around them intensifying. Suddenly, the ground beneath them shook, and a low hum filled the air. The team backed away, weapons ready, as the structure began to shift, ancient mechanisms grinding into motion. The central part of the structure opened, revealing a dark passageway leading deep underground. From within, a cold, unnatural wind blew out, carrying whispers in a language none of them could understand. We should fall back, Ford urged, her instincts screaming that they were walking into a trap. But Matsuda, driven by a mixture of fear and fascination, stepped forward. Wait, this could be our chance to learn more. If these watchers are connected to this place, we need to understand what we're dealing with. Ross's voice crackled over the comms. Team, report. What's your status? Harper responded quickly. We found an ancient structure, Captain. It's doing something. We're about to investigate further. There was a brief pause before Ross replied, her tone cautious. Proceed, but be ready to pull out if anything goes wrong. We can't afford to lose anyone. Taking a deep breath, Harper nodded to her team. Let's move. Stay sharp. They entered the passageway, the light from their helmets barely cutting through the thick darkness. The walls were lined with more of the glowing symbols, and the deeper they went, the more intense the energy field became. At the end of the passage, they found themselves in a large chamber. In the center stood a massive, crystalline structure, pulsating with energy. Surrounding it were several smaller structures, each one holding what appeared to be a humanoid figure encased in some kind of stasis field. Matsuda's eyes widened as he realized what they were looking at. These, these must be the Watchers. They're in stasis, but, but why? Before anyone could respond, the crystalline structure flared with light, and the stasis fields began to weaken. The figures inside started to stir, their eyes opening to reveal the same glowing patterns they had seen on Dias. We need to get out of here. Ford said urgently, now. But it was too late. The figures stepped out of their stasis chambers, their movements slow and deliberate. They were tall, with elongated limbs and faces that were both alien and disturbingly human. One of them spoke, its voice echoing in their minds. You have awakened us. Why do you trespass on sacred ground? Matsuda, shaking with fear, tried to respond. We, we didn't mean to. We're explorers, we didn't know. The Watcher tilted its head, studying them with cold, calculating eyes. Your kind is curious, but also dangerous. You have disturbed the balance. Ross's voice came over the comms, urgent and commanding. Harper, get your team out of there now. We're detecting massive energy spikes. Something big is about to happen. The chamber began to shake violently and the crystalline structure pulsed with a blinding light. The watchers raised their hands, and the energy field around them surged, filling the chamber with an overwhelming force. Move, Harper shouted, pulling Matsuda back as the team retreated towards the passageway. The watchers did not pursue, but their presence loomed over them like a dark shadow, their eyes following every step. As they emerged from the structure, the ground behind them erupted in a burst of light and energy, the ancient site collapsing in on itself. The team barely made it out alive, stumbling back to the clearing where the Endeavor was waiting. Get us out of here, Ross ordered as they scrambled aboard. The Endeavor's engines roared to life, and the ship lifted off, leaving HX-113 behind. But even as they escaped the planet's surface, they knew they had not escaped the Watchers. They could still feel their presence, a lingering sense of dread that hung over them like a dark cloud. Back in orbit, the Endeavor's crew gathered in the war room, their expressions grim. The encounter with the Watchers had shaken them to their core, and the implications were clear. They had awakened something ancient and powerful, something that was now aware of humanity's existence. Ross stood at the head of the table, her face set in determination. We can't let this go unreported. Command needs to know what we've found. If these Watchers are a threat, we need to be prepared. Matsuda nodded, though his face was lined with worry. But what if reporting this draws them to us, if they see us as a threat? 
We don't have a choice, Ross replied firmly. If we don't act, we're leaving Earth vulnerable to an enemy we don't understand. We need to take every precaution, but we can't ignore this. The team agreed, though the unease in the room was palpable. As the endeavor made its way back to Earth, they could only hope that their actions had not set in motion events that would lead to humanity's downfall. But even as they prepared their report, the Watchers were already on the move. Across the galaxy, ancient structures like the one on HX 113 began to stir, their occupants awakening after eons of slumber. And as the stars shifted and the universe trembled, the Watchers turned their gaze towards Earth, their intentions shrouded in mystery. The Endeavor's return to Earth was filled with tension and urgency. As soon as the ship docked at the orbital station, the crew was debriefed and the initial report was filed. Captain Ross, Dr. Matsuda, and Lieutenant Harper found themselves facing a new set of challenges as they worked to communicate their findings to Earth Command. In the war room of the orbital station, Admiral James Cutter, a seasoned officer with a reputation for being both stern and decisive, listened intently as Ross and Matsuda presented their report. The room was filled with high-ranking officers and scientists, all eager to understand the implications of the crew's encounter with the Watchers. Admiral, what we encountered on HX-113 was unlike anything we've seen before, Ross began. These beings, the Watchers, are ancient and powerful. They seem to be connected to a network of similar structures across the galaxy. We believe they are capable of manipulating energy fields and have a level of intelligence far beyond what we imagined. Admiral Cutter nodded, his expression thoughtful. And you're certain they pose a threat to us? Yes, sir, Matsuda replied. Their actions and the energy signatures we detected indicate that they are not only aware of us, but also capable of reacting to our presence. They have the potential to disrupt our technology and even endanger our lives if we're not careful. Cutter leaned back in his chair, his gaze piercing. We've faced alien threats before, but this is different. We need to approach this with extreme caution. What do you suggest we do next? Ross exchanged a glance with Matsuda. We need to further investigate these structures, both the one we encountered and any others that might be similar. We also need to develop countermeasures against their energy manipulation. If we can understand their technology and their intentions, we might be able to prevent any future conflicts. Cutter nodded slowly. Very well. I'll approve a new mission to investigate these structures. But we need to be prepared for the worst. I want you to assemble a team of the best experts we have, both military and scientific. With the orders given, Ross and Matsuda returned to the Endeavor, now outfitted with enhanced equipment and additional personnel. The new mission was to explore other potential Watcher sites and to develop defensive strategies against their advanced technology. As the Endeavor set course for a new star system where another potential Watcher site had been detected, Earth Command continued to monitor the situation closely. Unbeknownst to them, the arrival of the Endeavor had set off a chain reaction across the galaxy. In the remote fringes of the galaxy, an ancient and enigmatic alien race known as the Agarthians began to stir. They had been in hibernation for millennia, hidden away in the depths of space. The Agarthians were an advanced species, capable of manipulating energy on a cosmic scale. They had been in conflict with the Watchers long ago, and their slumber had been a precautionary measure to avoid further conflict. The Agarthian Central Hive, a colossal structure floating in the void of space, began to awaken. Deep within its core, an ancient being known as Eldarian stirred from his stasis. Eldarian was one of the most powerful Agarthians, and his awakening signaled a shift in the cosmic balance. Eldarian's eyes, glowing with an otherworldly light, scanned the data streams coming from across the galaxy. His mind processed the information, noting the disturbances caused by the Watchers and the new presence of human explorers. It appears the time has come, Eldarian rumbled, his voice resonating through the hive. The Watchers have re-emerged, and humanity has become entangled in their web. He turned to his council of elders, their forms shimmering with an ethereal glow. We must act swiftly. 
If the Watchers are allowed to continue their plans unchecked, they will disrupt the balance of the cosmos, and if humanity becomes a pawn in their game, the consequences could be catastrophic. The Council nodded in agreement. What is our course of action, Eldarian? Eldarian's gaze was unwavering. We will intervene. We must guide humanity and prevent them from falling victim to the Watcher's schemes. They are our allies, albeit unwittingly. We must ensure that they are prepared for the trials to come. Back aboard the Endeavor, the crew was busy preparing for their next mission. Dr. Matsuda and his team were focused on analyzing the data from HX-113 and developing countermeasures against the Watcher's technology. Lieutenant Harper was overseeing the security measures, ensuring that the crew was ready for any potential threats. As the ship approached the new star system, the crew began to experience strange phenomena. Equipment malfunctioned sporadically, and there were reports of unexplained energy fluctuations throughout the ship. This isn't normal, Harper said, frowning as she reviewed the reports. The energy readings are all over the place. It's like something is interfering with our systems. Matsuda examined the data and nodded in agreement. It's consistent with the energy patterns we saw on HX-113. It's possible that the Watchers have some influence over our technology, even from a distance. Ross, who had been listening in, made a decision. We need to prepare for the possibility that the Watchers might be aware of us. If they are capable of manipulating energy fields, they might also be able to track us. The crew continued their preparations, but the atmosphere aboard the Endeavor was tense. They knew that their next encounter with the Watchers could be even more dangerous than the last. As they arrived in the new star system, they identified several potential sites where the Watchers might have established structures. The Endeavor was positioned to conduct detailed scans and gather as much information as possible. In the depths of the galaxy, the Agarthians began their intervention. Their ships, sleek and almost invisible against the backdrop of space, moved swiftly towards the regions where the Watchers were active. Eldarian and his council had determined that direct confrontation was not yet necessary. Instead, their goal was to monitor and guide the unfolding events from the shadows. One of the Agarthian scouts, a vessel named Seraphis, approached the star system where the Endeavor was operating. Its crew of elite agents, skilled in both diplomacy and warfare, prepared for their mission. The leader of the Seraphis crew, Leora, communicated with Eldarian. We are in position. The Watchers have not detected us yet, but their presence is unmistakable. We are prepared to assist the humans in navigating this perilous situation. Eldarian's voice came through, calm and authoritative. Good. Ensure that the humans are guided to the right path. We must prevent any unnecessary conflict. The Watchers are unpredictable and dangerous. Our intervention must be subtle, but effective. As the Seraphis began its covert operations, the crew of the Endeavor continued their exploration. They had identified an interesting signal coming from a nearby moon, and they decided to investigate. The moon was barren, with a surface covered in ice and rock. The team landed at a designated site and began setting up their equipment. The scans revealed an unusual energy signature beneath the surface. We're picking up a strong energy source below us, Matsuda said, his voice tinged with excitement. It's similar to what we saw on HX-113. We might be getting closer to understanding the Watchers. As they dug through the ice and rock, they uncovered a hidden entrance to a subterranean structure. The team descended into the darkness, their lights cutting through the thick gloom. Inside, they found another ancient structure, similar in design to the one on HX-113. The walls were adorned with glowing symbols, and the air was thick with the same energy that had affected Dias. This place is almost a replica of what we saw before, Harper noted, but it's more intact. We might be able to learn something useful here. They began their examination focusing on the symbols and energy sources. Matsuda was particularly intrigued by the way the symbols seemed to interact with the energy fields. This is incredible, he said, his eyes wide with wonder. It's like a map of energy pathways. If we can decipher it, 
we might be able to predict the watcher's movements. As the team worked, they heard a faint humming sound, growing louder. The structure began to tremble, and the symbols on the walls flared with intense light. Get back, Harper ordered as the team retreated. The structure's energy field was fluctuating wildly, and they needed to get out before it became too dangerous. They made their way back to the surface, where the endeavor was waiting. As they left the moon, they noticed a shadowy figure watching them from the edge of the ice. It looks like we're not alone, Harper said, her voice tense. We need to stay alert. The Endeavor sensors picked up a faint energy signature that matched the readings from the moon. The crew knew they were being watched, but they had no way of identifying who or what was observing them. The crew of the Endeavor continued to investigate the strange energy signatures and structures. Despite their best efforts, they were unable to get a clear read on the Watcher's intentions. The energy fields remained enigmatic, and their technology continued to defy understanding. Meanwhile, the Agarthians, operating from the shadows, watched the humans' progress with growing concern. Eldarion, aware of the potential for escalation, decided it was time to make contact with the humans directly. Leora, the leader of the Seraphis crew, prepared for the delicate task of approaching the endeavor. Her team had gathered enough information to provide valuable guidance to the humans, and it was crucial that their intervention be precise. As the Endeavor approached a new star system with another potential watcher site, Leora's ship emerged from stealth and approached the Endeavor. On board the Endeavor, the crew was startled when a mysterious signal appeared on their sensors. The signal was accompanied by a burst of energy that matched the patterns they had encountered before. Captain, we're receiving an unknown signal, Harper reported. It's not from the Watchers, but it's definitely not a standard communication either. Ross ordered the crew to prepare for potential contact. Let's see who's reaching out to us. Maintain alert status. The signal intensified, and a holographic image appeared on the Endeavor's bridge. The image was of an alien figure, sleek and elegant, with an aura of authority. Greetings, humans, the figure said, its voice resonating with a calm yet commanding tone. I am Leora of the Agarthians. We have been observing your progress and have come to offer our assistance. The crew stared in shock, trying to process the appearance of this new alien race. Captain Ross took a deep breath and stepped forward. We were unaware of your presence. Why have you chosen to contact us now? Leora's expression was serene. The Watchers are a dangerous and ancient race. They have begun to stir once more, and their actions threaten the balance of the cosmos. We have a vested interest in preventing their plans from coming to fruition, and we believe that cooperating with you could be mutually beneficial. Matsuda, intrigued, asked, What do you know about the Watchers? Can you help us understand their technology and intentions? Leora nodded. Indeed. The Watchers have been a source of great concern for many civilizations. They are capable of manipulating energy fields on a massive scale and possess knowledge that could be disastrous if misused. Our goal is to assist you in countering their influence and protecting your world. Ross exchanged a glance with her senior officers. And what do you want in return? Leora's eyes held a glint of seriousness. We require your cooperation in ensuring that the Watchers do not achieve their objectives. This includes sharing any findings you have regarding their technology and collaborating on strategies to prevent any further escalation. Ross considered the offer carefully. We're willing to cooperate, but we need more information. Can you provide details on how we can protect ourselves and what we should expect? Leora's holographic image flickered slightly as she transmitted additional data to the Endeavor systems. This information includes analyzes of the Watcher's energy fields, potential weaknesses, and strategies for evading their detection. It is imperative that you review it carefully and implement the recommendations. As the transmission ended, the hologram faded, leaving the crew to digest the new information. Ross turned to her team her face set in determination. We have a new ally, though their motives remain somewhat ambiguous. Our priority is to safeguard humanity 
and ensure we are prepared for whatever the watchers might throw at us. With the new data from Leora, the Endeavor's crew worked tirelessly to adapt their technology and strategies. The Agarthian information provided valuable insights into the Watchers' energy manipulation and weaknesses, allowing them to develop countermeasures. Dr. Matsuda and his team focused on integrating the Agarthian technology into the Endeavor systems. They made modifications to enhance their sensors and shields, aiming to protect against the Watchers' energy fields and improve their ability to detect any further disturbances. Lieutenant Harper, meanwhile, reviewed the security protocols, ensuring that the crew was prepared for any potential encounters. She organized training exercises to simulate possible scenarios involving the Watchers, helping the crew to react quickly and effectively. As the Endeavor prepared for its next mission, the crew was on high alert. The Watchers' presence was still felt, a constant reminder of the looming threat. The Endeavor set course for a new star system, where another potential Watcher site had been detected. The crew knew that this mission could be crucial in understanding the Watchers' plans and preventing any potential disasters. The journey through the star system was tense, with the crew constantly monitoring their surroundings for any signs of Watcher activity. The enhanced sensors and shields provided a measure of reassurance, but the uncertainty of the situation kept everyone on edge. As they approached the designated site, the Endeavor detected an energy signature consistent with the Watcher's technology. The team prepared for an investigation, knowing that this could be their chance to gather more information and potentially uncover the Watcher's plans. The Endeavor arrived at the site, a remote, rocky planet with a harsh environment. The energy signature seemed to be coming from a series of underground structures beneath the planet's surface. The crew deployed a series of probes and conducted scans, identifying an entrance to a hidden fortress buried deep within the planet's crust. The entrance was shielded by an energy field, but the Agarthian data had provided insights into how to bypass it. Matsuda and his team worked on interfacing with the energy field, using the Agarthian technology to establish a connection. With careful adjustments and coordination, they managed to breach the field and gain access to the fortress. As the team descended into the fortress, they found themselves in a massive chamber filled with strange technology and intricate machinery. The walls were adorned with symbols similar to those they had seen before, and the energy fields in the chamber were fluctuating wildly. This place is massive, Harper said, her voice echoing in the chamber. We need to be cautious, if the Watchers are using this as a base, we could be walking into a trap. Matsuda scanned the technology, trying to make sense of the readings. These energy fields are unlike anything we've encountered. It's like the entire structure is a gigantic energy conduit. As they explored further, they came across a control room filled with data terminals and control panels. Matsuda and his team began analyzing the data, searching for any information that might reveal the Watcher's plans. Suddenly, the chamber's lights flickered, and an alarm began to sound. The energy fields around them intensified, and the team felt a surge of power that nearly knocked them off their feet. Get to cover, Harper shouted as the team scrambled to find a safe location. The fortress seemed to be coming alive, its systems activating in response to their presence. From the shadows, figures emerged watchers, their forms shifting and glowing with an eerie light. They moved with purpose, their eyes fixed on the intruding humans. We've been detected, Matsuda said, his voice tense. They know we're here. The watchers advanced, their energy fields creating a barrier that made it difficult for the crew to advance. Harper and her team fought to hold their ground, using the new defensive measures to protect themselves. Despite their best efforts, the Watchers were relentless. They moved with a grace and precision that seemed almost otherworldly, their energy fields forming a nearly impenetrable shield. Ross, who had been coordinating the mission from the Endeavor, realized the situation was deteriorating. We need to pull back and regroup. We can't afford to lose anyone. The team fell back to the entrance of the fortress, their path illuminated by the flashing lights of the alarm system. The Watchers did not pursue them beyond the chamber, but their presence was a stark reminder of the danger they faced. 
Back aboard the Endeavor, the crew was exhausted but determined. The encounter with the Watchers had provided valuable insights into their capabilities, but it had also highlighted the immense challenges they faced. Dr. Matsuda and his team analyzed the data they had retrieved from the fortress, trying to piece together the Watchers' plans. The information revealed that the Watchers were working on a project that involved manipulating energy fields on a galactic scale, potentially threatening the stability of entire star systems. This is far more serious than we anticipated, Matsuda said, his voice filled with concern. If they succeed, they could disrupt the balance of power across the galaxy. Captain Ross, her expression grim, addressed the crew. We need to continue gathering intelligence and developing our countermeasures. Our mission is to understand their plans and find a way to neutralize their threat. The Endeavor set course for another potential Watcher site, determined to uncover more information and prevent any further escalation. The crew knew that their next steps could be crucial in safeguarding humanity and ensuring the safety of the galaxy. As they traveled through the stars, the crew remained vigilant, their minds focused on the looming threat of the Watchers. The stakes were high, and the outcome of their mission could have far-reaching consequences. Meanwhile, in the depths of space, the Agarthians continued their covert operations, their actions aimed at guiding and protecting humanity. Eldarion and his council watched the unfolding events with a mixture of hope and apprehension, knowing that the balance of the cosmos depended on the success of the Endeavor's mission. The Endeavor arrived at their new destination, a planet with a peculiar energy signature that matched the Watcher's technology. The environment was harsh, with extreme temperatures and frequent storms, but the crew pressed on, determined to uncover the truth. The team deployed their equipment and began their investigation. The scans revealed a hidden facility buried deep within the planet's crust, similar in design to the previous Watcher sites. As they explored the facility, they discovered a central chamber filled with complex machinery and energy conduits. The energy fields in the chamber were intense, but the Agarthian technology provided some protection. Dr. Matsuda examined the machinery, trying to understand its function. This appears to be a nexus of power. The energy conduits are connected to a vast network, possibly spanning multiple star systems. Harper and her team worked on securing the area and ensuring that the crew was safe from any potential threats. The atmosphere was tense, with the crew on high alert for any signs of watcher activity. Suddenly, the machinery in the chamber began to hum and vibrate, and a new energy signature appeared on the sensors. The team realized that they had triggered a system activation. We've activated something, Harper said, her voice tense. Prepare for anything. The central chamber lit up with an intense energy glow, and a holographic projection appeared, depicting a map of the galaxy with various energy nodes highlighted. The projection seemed to show a network of Watcher installations and their connections. This is incredible, Matsuda said, his eyes wide with amazement. We've just uncovered their entire network. The crew began to analyze the projection, trying to decipher its meaning and determine the Watcher's plans. The data revealed that the Watchers were working on a project to create a massive energy conduit that could potentially manipulate entire star systems. As they studied the information, the energy fields in the chamber began to fluctuate wildly, and the facility's systems started to destabilize. The crew realized that they needed to leave quickly before the situation became too dangerous. Get out of there, Ross ordered, her voice filled with urgency. We need to evacuate the facility immediately. The team made their way back to the surface, their path illuminated by the flashing lights of the facility's alarm system. The storms on the planet were growing fiercer, and the crew had to navigate through treacherous conditions to reach the Endeavor. As they boarded the ship and prepared to leave, the energy fields in the facility erupted in a burst of light, sending shockwaves through the planet's surface. The Endeavor lifted off, narrowly escaping the explosion that engulfed the facility. With the new data from the Watcher facility, the Endeavor returned to its base of operations to regroup and analyze the information. The crew was exhausted but determined to understand the implications of their findings. 
Dr. Matsuda and his team worked tirelessly to decode the data from the holographic projection. The information revealed that the Watcher's project was far more advanced and dangerous than they had initially thought. This conduit could disrupt the entire galaxy, Matsuda said, his voice filled with concern. We need to find a way to stop them before it's too late. Captain Ross agreed, her expression resolute. We need to act quickly and decisively. Our next steps will be crucial in preventing the Watchers from completing their project. As the Endeavor prepared for its next mission, Leora and the Agarthians made contact once again. The Agarthian ship appeared alongside the Endeavor, and Leora's holographic image materialized on the bridge. Humans, Leora said, her voice calm yet urgent. We have been monitoring the situation and have determined that the Watcher's project poses an immediate threat to the galaxy. We must work together to neutralize this threat. Ross nodded her determination unwavering. We're ready to cooperate. What do you suggest we do? Leora transmitted additional information to the Endeavor systems, including detailed plans for disrupting the Watcher's energy conduit. The Agarthians had developed technology capable of neutralizing the conduit's power and destabilizing the Watcher's network. This technology is crucial for our mission, Leora explained. We must deploy it to the core of the Watcher's network to prevent them from completing their project. The Endeavor set course for the heart of the Watcher's network, determined to put an end to their plans. The crew was ready for the challenge, their minds focused on the task at hand. The Endeavor arrived at the core of the Watcher's network, a sprawling complex of energy conduits and machinery. The atmosphere was charged with intense energy, and the crew could feel the weight of their mission pressing down on them. Dr. Matsuda and his team prepared the Agarthian technology for deployment, ensuring that it was ready to neutralize the energy conduit. The crew moved swiftly, their actions coordinated and precise. As they approached the central chamber of the complex, they encountered a group of watchers. The alien beings, their forms shifting and glowing with an otherworldly light, advanced with purpose. We've been detected, Harper said, her voice tense. Prepare for combat. The crew engaged the Watchers, using their new defensive measures to hold their ground. The battle was intense, with the Watchers moving with a grace and precision that was almost overwhelming. Despite the fierce resistance, the crew pressed on, determined to reach the central chamber. They fought their way through the complex, their goal clear in their minds. Finally, they reached the heart of the Watcher's network. Dr. Matsuda and his team deployed the Agarthian technology, setting it up to neutralize the energy conduit and disrupt the Watcher's plans. As the technology activated, the energy fields in the chamber began to fluctuate wildly. The Watcher's machinery started to destabilize, and the central conduit began to collapse. We need to get out of here, Ross ordered, her voice filled with urgency. The entire complex is going to implode. The crew made their way back to the Endeavor, navigating through the collapsing complex and the fierce energy fluctuations. The ship was battered by the shock waves, but they managed to escape just in time. As the Endeavor lifted off, the Watcher's network exploded in a massive burst of energy, sending shock waves through the surrounding space. The crew watched as the complex was engulfed in a fiery inferno. The Endeavor returned to its base of operations, the crew exhausted but victorious. The mission had been successful, and the threat of the Watchers had been neutralized. The crew celebrated their success, but they knew that the fight against the Watchers was far from over. The galaxy was still filled with unknown threats and mysteries, and they remained vigilant, ready to face whatever challenges lay ahead. As the Endeavor prepared for its next mission, the crew looked to the future with determination and hope. They knew that their journey was far from over, 
and they were ready to continue exploring the stars and defending humanity from any threat that emerged. With the Watcher's threat neutralized, the Endeavor set course for a new frontier, eager to explore the unknown and continue their mission of discovery. The crew was rejuvenated, their spirits high as they ventured into new regions of space. Dr. Matsuda and his team continued their research, analyzing the data from the Watchers and exploring new technologies. Their work was crucial in advancing humanity's understanding of the galaxy and preparing for any future challenges. Lieutenant Harper oversaw the training and preparedness of the crew, ensuring that they were ready for any potential threats. Her leadership and dedication played a vital role in keeping the endeavor safe and secure. Captain Ross remained focused on the broader mission, guiding the endeavor and its crew with a steady hand. Her leadership and strategic vision were instrumental in navigating the complexities of space exploration and ensuring the safety of humanity. As the Endeavor traveled through the stars, the crew encountered new civilizations, explored uncharted worlds, and continued to push the boundaries of their knowledge. Each mission brought new challenges and opportunities, and the crew embraced them with enthusiasm and determination. The galaxy was vast and filled with mysteries, and the Endeavor's journey was far from over. The crew knew that their adventures would continue, and they were ready to face whatever lay ahead. In the depths of space, the legacy of their victory over the Watchers served as a beacon of hope and resilience. The crew of the Endeavor had proven that humanity was capable of facing even the greatest of challenges and emerging triumphant. And as they ventured into the unknown, they carried with them the spirit of exploration and the unwavering determination to protect and defend their world and the galaxy they called home. As the Endeavor ventured deeper into uncharted space, the crew remained vigilant, their eyes constantly scanning for any signs of emerging threats or new discoveries. The galaxy was vast, and the mysteries it held seemed endless. Dr. Mitsuda's team continued to analyze the remnants of Watcher technology, searching for any overlooked data or hidden threats. Their research led them to a startling discovery, a series of encoded messages embedded within the Watcher's energy fields. This is fascinating, Matsuda said, his eyes focused on the data. These messages appear to be historical records. It's possible that they contain information about the Watcher's past and their motivations. Captain Ross, intrigued, joined Matsuda at the console. Can you decode the messages? Matsuda nodded. It will take time, but we're making progress. If these records reveal anything significant, it could provide valuable insights into the Watcher's origins and their true intentions. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Harper oversaw a series of drills and training exercises to ensure that the crew was prepared for any potential threats. Her efforts were focused on keeping the crew sharp and ready for any eventuality. During one of these drills, the Endeavor's sensors detected an unusual energy signature. The signature was faint but consistent and it appeared to be coming from a nearby star system. Captain, we've picked up a new energy signature, Harper reported. It matches some of the patterns we've seen before, but it's different. It could be another Watcher outpost or something entirely new. Ross considered the information carefully. Set a course for the star system. Let's investigate and see if there's anything of interest. The Endeavor altered its trajectory and approached the star system, the crew on high alert. As they neared the source of the energy signature, they detected an ancient space station orbiting a desolate planet. The space station was a relic from a bygone era, its design reminiscent of the technology used by the Watchers. Its structure was battered and worn, but it still emitted a faint energy signal. Dr. Matsuda and his team prepared to board the station and investigate. The atmosphere was tense, as the crew was unsure of what they might find. As they approached the space station, they encountered a series of automated defenses. The systems were outdated but still operational, posing a challenge to the team as they worked to bypass the security measures. Once inside, they discovered a control room filled with ancient data terminals and relics. The technology was rudimentary compared to what they had encountered before, but it provided a glimpse into the past. 
Matsuda accessed one of the terminals and began to sift through the data. This station appears to be a research facility from an earlier period. The data suggests that it was used to study energy manipulation and interstellar travel. As they explored further, they found a series of detailed logs and reports. The records detailed the experiments conducted by the Watchers and their predecessors, revealing insights into their technological advancements and their goals. One log, in particular, stood out. It described an ancient project to harness the energy of a dying star to power a massive device capable of altering the fabric of space itself. The implications were staggering. This project could have been the precursor to the Watcher's current plans, Matsuda said, his voice filled with awe. If they succeeded, it could explain their ability to manipulate energy on a galactic scale. The crew continued to study the data, piecing together the history of the Watchers and their technological evolution. The findings provided valuable context for their previous encounters and offered clues for future encounters. As they completed their investigation, the Endeavor prepared to leave the ancient space station. The crew had gained new insights into the Watchers and their technology, but they knew that there was still much to learn. The discovery of the ancient space station and the insights gained from its data only fueled the Endeavor's quest for knowledge. The crew continued to explore new regions of space, driven by the desire to understand the Watchers and their impact on the galaxy. Their travels brought them into contact with various civilizations and species, each with their own perspectives on the Watchers and their influence. Some were allies, while others were wary or hostile. One encounter in particular proved to be both enlightening and challenging. The Endeavor visited a system inhabited by a technologically advanced race known as the Zelriths. The Zelriths had a long history of conflict with the Watchers and had valuable information about their operations. Captain Ross and her team met with the Zelriths' leaders, seeking to form an alliance and exchange information. The Zelriths were initially hesitant, but their leader, High Chancellor Verrick, agreed to share what they knew. Our people have battled the Watchers for centuries, Verk said, his voice grave. We have seen their schemes and their attempts to manipulate the galaxy. Our technology has been developed in response to their threats. Dr. Matsuda reviewed the Zelrith's data, noting similarities to the Watcher's technology. Your technology could be crucial in developing new countermeasures. We need to work together to ensure that we can effectively combat the Watcher's plans. The alliance between the Endeavor and the Zelriths promised to enhance their capabilities and provide new insights into the Watcher's operations. However, tensions remained, as both sides had their own agendas and concerns. As the collaboration progressed, it became clear that the Zelriths had their own internal struggles. Factions within their society had differing views on how to handle the Watcher threat, leading to political instability and conflict. Captain Ross and her team navigated the complex political landscape, working to build trust and cooperation among the Zelriths. The efforts were challenging, but they were crucial for forming a united front against the Watchers. The alliance with the Zelriths proved to be a valuable asset in the Endeavor's mission. The combined resources and knowledge allowed them to develop new strategies and technologies for countering the Watchers. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked closely with a Zelrith scientist to refine their understanding of the Watcher's technology. They developed new energy manipulation techniques and improved their defensive systems. One breakthrough came when they discovered a previously unknown aspect of the Watcher's energy fields. The Zelrith's technology revealed that the energy fields were not just barriers, but also conduits for transmitting information and influencing other systems. This changes everything, Matsuda said, his excitement palpable. If we can intercept and decode the transmissions, we might be able to understand the Watcher's plans in real time and predict their actions. The Endeavor's crew focused on developing new equipment to intercept and analyze the Watcher's transmissions. The technology proved to be effective, providing valuable insights into the Watcher's ongoing operations and their objectives. As they continued their work, the crew encountered a series of anomalies in the data.
the transmissions revealed patterns and signals that suggested a larger, more complex scheme orchestrated by the watchers. This doesn't make sense, Harper said, reviewing the data. The patterns indicate a level of coordination and manipulation beyond what we've seen before. The crew delved deeper into the analysis, uncovering a network of hidden messages and signals that pointed to a grand design involving multiple star systems. The watchers appeared to be orchestrating a series of events to achieve a specific goal. The Endeavor's investigation into the Watchers' grand design led them to a critical realization. The Watchers' plans were centered around a massive event that would alter the balance of power across the galaxy. The data revealed that the Watchers were preparing to initiate a cataclysmic event known as the Catalyst, which would destabilize the energy fields of multiple star systems and disrupt galactic stability. This is the culmination of their plans, Dr. Matsuda said, his voice filled with urgency. If they succeed, it could lead to widespread chaos and destruction. The crew of the Endeavor, in collaboration with the Zelriths, developed a plan to prevent the Catalyst from being activated. The plan involved disrupting the Watcher's preparations and neutralizing the energy sources that were integral to the Catalyst. The operation required precision and coordination. The Endeavor would need to infiltrate the Watcher's facilities disable their energy conduits, and prevent the activation of the catalyst. As the crew prepared for the mission, tensions ran high. The stakes were immense, and failure was not an option. The combined forces of the Endeavor and the Zelriths launched a series of coordinated strikes against key Watcher installations. The mission was fraught with challenges, as the Watcher's defenses were formidable and their technology advanced. The crew faced fierce resistance and had to adapt quickly to the evolving situation. Despite the obstacles, the Endeavor and its allies made significant progress. They disabled several key energy conduits and disrupted the Watcher's plans. But the Catalyst was still on the brink of activation. The final phase of the mission approached, and the Endeavor's crew knew that they were running out of time. The Watcher's preparations for the Catalyst were nearly complete and the event could be initiated at any moment. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked to finalize the countermeasures and ensure that they were prepared for the critical operation. The team focused on neutralizing the core components of the catalyst and preventing its activation. Captain Ross and her crew prepared for a decisive confrontation with the Watchers. The Endeavor set course for the heart of the Watchers' network, where the catalyst was being assembled. As they arrived at the location, they encountered a heavily fortified facility, brimming with Watcher technology and energy conduits. The Watchers were on high alert, and the crew had to navigate through a series of obstacles to reach their target. The battle was intense, with the Watchers deploying their most advanced defenses and combat units. The Endeavor's crew fought valiantly, their determination unwavering as they pressed forward. Dr. Matsuda and his team reached the central chamber where the catalyst was being assembled. They worked quickly to disable the energy conduits and neutralize the core components. Just as they were on the verge of completing their task, the Watchers initiated a last-ditch effort to activate the catalyst. The chamber was filled with chaotic energy fluctuations, and the situation became increasingly perilous. The crew faced a critical choice continue their efforts to disable the catalyst or escape and regroup. They decided to press on, risking everything to prevent the catastrophic event from occurring. The Endeavor's crew fought through the chaos as they worked to disable the catalyst. The energy fields were unstable, and the facility was on the brink of collapse. Dr. Matsuda and his team made a final push to neutralize the core components. With every passing second, the situation grew more dire, and the risk of failure became more imminent. As the crew worked, Captain Ross and Lieutenant Harper led the defense against the Watchers, buying time for the team to complete their task. The battle was fierce, with the Watchers launching relentless attacks to prevent the crew from succeeding. Dr. Matsuda's team made a critical breakthrough, successfully neutralizing the core components of the catalyst. The energy fields began to stabilize, and the facility's systems started to shut down. The Watchers, realizing that their plans were unraveling, 
launched a final, desperate assault. The facility was engulfed in explosions and energy discharges, and the crew had to make a hasty retreat. Captain Ross ordered the endeavor to withdraw, and the ship maneuvered through the collapsing facility and the chaotic energy fluctuations. The crew fought their way to safety, narrowly escaping the destruction. As the endeavor lifted off, the Watcher's facility erupted in a massive explosion, sending shockwaves through the surrounding space. The catalyst was neutralized, and the threat was averted. With the catalyst destroyed and the Watcher's plans thwarted, the endeavor returned to its base of operations. The crew was exhausted but victorious, having prevented a catastrophic event that could have reshaped the galaxy. The alliance with the Zelriths proved to be a crucial factor in the mission's success. The combined efforts of the Endeavor and the Zelriths had delivered a decisive blow to the Watchers and their schemes. Dr. Matsuda and his team continued to analyze the aftermath of the mission, studying the remnants of Watcher technology and assessing the impact of their actions. Captain Ross addressed the crew, her voice filled with pride and gratitude. We faced an unprecedented challenge and emerged victorious. Our actions have safeguarded the galaxy and secured a brighter future for all. The crew celebrated their success, but they remained aware that their journey was far from over. The galaxy was still filled with mysteries and challenges, and they were ready to continue their exploration and defense. As the endeavor set course for new frontiers, the crew looked to the future with hope and determination. They knew that their adventures would continue, and they were prepared to face whatever challenges lay ahead. The legacy of their victory over the Watchers served as a beacon of resilience and courage. The crew of the Endeavor had proven that humanity was capable of confronting even the greatest of threats and emerging triumphant. In the depths of space, the Endeavor's journey continued, driven by the spirit of exploration and the unwavering commitment to protect and defend the galaxy they called home. Despite their recent victory, the Endeavor's crew was aware that the galaxy remained fraught with danger. The destruction of the Catalyst was a significant win, but it didn't mark the end of their struggles. As they navigated through uncharted regions, they encountered unusual signals that suggested a hidden threat. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked diligently to analyze the new data. The signals indicated a series of anomalies within the energy fields surrounding a distant star system. The crew prepared to investigate, wary of potential dangers. As they approached the star system, they found an area of space distorted by gravitational anomalies. The anomalies created a complex and unpredictable environment, making navigation challenging. Lieutenant Harper and her team conducted a thorough scan of the region trying to pinpoint the source of the anomalies. The readings were erratic, and it was difficult to determine their origin. We need to be cautious, Harper said. These anomalies could be the result of a weapon or an unstable energy source. We should prepare for anything. The Endeavor maneuvered through the distorted space, approaching the source of the signals. They discovered an ancient, abandoned facility hidden within the gravitational anomalies. The facility's design was unfamiliar but bore some resemblance to Watcher technology. Dr. Matsuda and his team boarded the facility to investigate. The structure was decayed but still operational. The data they uncovered revealed that the facility had been used to experiment with gravitational manipulation and energy distortion. This place was used for research into advanced energy manipulation, Matsuda said. It's possible that the anomalies are a byproduct of these experiments. The crew explored the facility, uncovering data on experimental technologies and energy sources. Among the findings was a reference to a powerful device known as the Graviton Engine, capable of generating massive gravitational distortions. Could this be what's causing the anomalies? Ross asked, reviewing the data. It's possible, Matsuda replied. If the Graviton engine is still active, it could be destabilizing the region and creating these anomalies. The crew worked to locate and neutralize the Graviton engine. Their efforts led them to a central chamber where the device was partially operational. The engine was emitting intense gravitational waves, affecting the surrounding space. As they approached the engine, the facility's systems began to react, 
triggering automated defenses. The crew faced a series of challenges as they navigated through the facility, fighting off security measures and dealing with environmental hazards. The crew finally reached the core of the Graviton engine. The device was massive, its intricate design reflecting advanced technology. The engine's energy output was fluctuating, creating powerful gravitational distortions. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked to understand the engine's mechanisms and find a way to shut it down. The device was highly complex, and disabling it required precise calibration and careful handling. Shutting down the Graviton engine is going to be tricky, Matsuda said, examining the controls. We need to carefully modulate the energy levels to avoid triggering a catastrophic failure. The crew worked in tandem to adjust the engine settings. As they made progress, the facility's defenses intensified, and they faced increasing resistance from automated systems. Lieutenant Harper led a team to secure the area and protect the engineers working on the Graviton engine. The tension was high as they navigated through the facility, dealing with security drones and energy barriers. The situation grew more precarious as the gravitational anomalies intensified. The distortions were affecting the Endeavour systems, making it difficult to maintain stable orbit and communication. Despite the challenges, the crew persevered. They successfully calibrated the Graviton engine and began the process of shutting it down. The device's energy output decreased, and the gravitational distortions began to stabilize. With the Graviton engine deactivated, the anomalies started to subside. The crew secured the facility and prepared to leave. The Endeavour systems were restored, and the ship was able to navigate more easily through the previously distorted space. The deactivation of the Graviton engine was a significant achievement, but it also raised new questions. The crew continued to investigate the facility and its data, seeking to understand the full extent of its purpose and origins. Dr. Matsuda and his team delved into the historical records and experimental logs found within the facility. They discovered that the Graviton engine was part of a larger project designed to manipulate space-time and explore new dimensions. The research here was cutting edge, even by watcher standards, Matsuda said. It seems that the Graviton engine was intended to explore or possibly exploit alternate dimensions. The crew examined the implications of these findings. If the watchers had been experimenting with alternate dimensions, it could explain some of the anomalies and disturbances they had encountered. Captain Ross and her team considered the potential risks and opportunities. If the watchers were exploring alternate dimensions, they might have uncovered new threats or technologies. We need to be prepared for any unexpected developments. The crew continued their research, analyzing the data and preparing for potential encounters with new threats. They also reviewed their own technology and strategies to ensure they were ready for any challenges that might arise. The Endeavour's mission took them to new regions of space, where they encountered remnants of old conflicts and battles. The galaxy was scarred by wars and skirmishes, and the crew found evidence of long-forgotten battles between ancient civilizations. One particularly intriguing discovery was an abandoned battlefield littered with the remains of massive war machines and alien technology. The site provided clues to the conflicts that had shaped the galaxy's history. Dr. Matsuda and his team studied the battlefield, piecing together the history of the conflict. They discovered that the site was a key strategic location in a war between two powerful civilizations. This battlefield was the site of a decisive battle, Matsuda said. The technology and remains here indicate that it was a major turning point in the war. The crew's investigation revealed that the conflict had involved advanced weaponry and energy manipulation. The remnants of the battle offered insights into the technologies and tactics used by the combatants. As they explored the site, they encountered a hidden chamber containing valuable artifacts and data. The artifacts included advanced weaponry and technology that could provide new capabilities for the endeavor. Captain Ross and her team assessed the potential benefits of the discoveries. These artifacts could enhance our technology and improve our ability to defend against future threats. We need to carefully evaluate their potential applications. 
the crew continued to study the artifacts and integrate their findings into their technology. The discoveries also provided a deeper understanding of the galaxy's history and the conflicts that had shaped its current state. As the Endeavor's journey continued, the crew faced a new and unexpected threat. They encountered an enigmatic signal originating from a region of space known for its instability and danger. The signal was faint and intermittent, but it contained a pattern that suggested it was a deliberate transmission. The crew worked to locate the source and determine its nature. Dr. Matsuda and his team analyzed the signal, discovering that it appeared to be a distress call or a warning. The signal contained fragmented data and coded messages. We're dealing with something unusual, Matsuda said. The signal is encrypted and contains elements that don't match any known technology. The Endeavor set course for the source of the signal, navigating through a treacherous region of space filled with gravitational distortions and energy fluctuations. The crew was on high alert, prepared for any potential dangers. As they approached the source, they encountered a derelict spacecraft floating in the void. The ship was heavily damaged and showed signs of an intense battle. The crew boarded the spacecraft to investigate. Inside, they found evidence of a conflict and signs of advanced technology. The ship's systems were barely operational, and the crew had to work quickly to access the data. They discovered that the spacecraft had been sent by a civilization seeking refuge from a mysterious and powerful entity known as the Phantom. The Phantom was described as an elusive and dangerous force capable of manipulating space and time. This Phantom seems to be a major threat, Dr. Matsuda said. We need to gather more information and prepare for a potential encounter. The crew began to investigate the Phantom and its capabilities. They gathered data from the derelict spacecraft and analyzed the threat posed by this enigmatic entity. The investigation into the Phantom continued as the Endeavor's crew worked to piece together the nature of the threat. The data from the derelict spacecraft provided valuable insights, but the true extent of the Phantom's abilities remained unclear. The crew encountered more signals and reports about the Phantom, revealing that it had been responsible for a series of disappearances and disturbances across the galaxy. The Phantom was known for its ability to manipulate space-time and create anomalies. Dr. Matsuda and his team developed new theories about the Phantom's capabilities. They hypothesized that the entity might be using advanced technology or even a form of intelligence to exert its influence. We need to prepare for an encounter with the Phantom, Matsuda said. It's essential that we understand its technology and strategies to effectively combat it. The Endeavor set out to gather more information and prepare for a potential confrontation. The crew worked on developing countermeasures and refining their technology to address the threat. As they continued their research, they encountered more evidence of the Phantom's influence. The signals and disturbances became more frequent, indicating that the entity was active and posing a growing threat. Captain Ross and her team prepared for a potential showdown with a phantom. The crew conducted drills and simulations to ensure that they were ready for any scenario. The Endeavor's mission was becoming increasingly complex as they faced new challenges and threats. The crew remained focused and determined, knowing that their actions would have a significant impact on the galaxy's future. With the threat of the phantom looming larger, the Endeavor's crew intensified their preparations. The Phantom was an enigma, and its motives remained shrouded in mystery. The crew needed to understand its capabilities and intentions to mount an effective response. Dr. Matsuda led a series of simulations and analyzes to develop countermeasures against the Phantom. They focused on understanding its manipulation of space-time and identifying potential vulnerabilities in its technology. One key breakthrough came when they discovered that the Phantom's disturbances followed a specific pattern. The anomalies created by the Phantom were not random, but appeared to be strategically targeted. We're seeing a pattern in the Phantom's activities, Matsuda said, reviewing the data. It's almost as if it's trying to influence specific regions or events. The crew hypothesized that the Phantom might be using its capabilities to manipulate or disrupt critical points in the galaxy. 
they identified several key locations that could be potential targets. As they investigated these locations, they encountered evidence of the phantom's influence. Disturbances in space-time and anomalies in energy readings indicated that the entity was actively shaping events and creating chaos. Captain Ross and her team developed a strategy to counter the phantom's influence. They planned to intercept and neutralize its activities at the identified key locations. The Endeavor set course for one of these locations, an area known for its strategic importance. The crew prepared for a confrontation with the Phantom and made final adjustments to their technology and tactics. The Endeavor arrived at the designated location, a critical star system with vital trade routes and strategic value. The crew detected increased disturbances in space-time, consistent with the Phantom's influence. As they approached, the Endeavor sensors picked up an unusual energy signature emanating from a nearby asteroid field. The energy readings were erratic and fluctuated unpredictably. Dr. Matsuda and his team analyzed the data, determining that the energy signature was consistent with the Phantom's manipulation of space-time. The crew prepared to investigate the source of the disturbances. Navigating through the asteroid field proved challenging. The distortions in space-time created unpredictable gravitational effects, making it difficult to maintain a stable trajectory. The Endeavor's crew used their enhanced technology and expertise to maneuver through the field. They located an ancient structure embedded within one of the asteroids, its design reminiscent of advanced technology. As they boarded the structure, they encountered signs of a long-abandoned facility. The interior was filled with decayed technology and remnants of previous experiments. Dr. Mitsuda and his team began to analyze the facility's data, uncovering records of experiments related to space-time manipulation and gravitational control. The facility appeared to have been used by a previous civilization to study advanced energy and gravitational effects. The crew found references to a project known as the Rift Engine, which was designed to create and control artificial rifts in space-time. The data suggested that the Rift Engine had the potential to open breaches between dimensions or manipulate space on a grand scale. This Rift Engine could be the key to understanding the Phantom's capabilities, Matsuda said. If the Phantom is using similar technology, it could explain its ability to create disturbances and anomalies. With their newfound understanding of the Rift Engine and its potential applications, the Endeavor's crew prepared for a direct encounter with the Phantom. They developed a plan to disrupt the entity's activities and counter its influence. The crew identified a critical location where the Phantom's disturbances were most intense. They set a course for the site, ready for a confrontation with the elusive entity. As they approached, they detected a massive gravitational anomaly centered around a distant pulsar. The anomaly was consistent with the Phantom's manipulation of space-time and energy. The Endeavor sensors picked up an anomalous energy signature, indicating the presence of the Phantom. The crew prepared for a high-stakes confrontation, with their technology and strategies fine-tuned to address the threat. The Phantom revealed itself in a burst of distorted energy manifesting as a swirling mass of gravitational waves and temporal distortions. The entity was a powerful and elusive presence, its form shifting and changing unpredictably. Captain Ross and her team engaged the Phantom, using their advanced technology to counter its gravitational and temporal manipulations. The battle was intense, with the Phantom's abilities creating a chaotic and disorienting environment. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked to understand the Phantom's weaknesses, analyzing its energy patterns and vulnerabilities. They discovered that the entity's manipulations were based on a specific frequency and energy signature. The crew used this information to develop countermeasures, focusing their efforts on disrupting the Phantom's energy source and destabilizing its manipulations. The battle reached a critical point as they launched their final offensive against the entity. As the confrontation with the Phantom intensified, the crew faced new challenges. The entity's manipulations created shifting realities and illusions, making it difficult to distinguish between reality and deception. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked to maintain focus and resist the Phantom's attempts to disorient them. 
they use their technology to analyze and counteract the illusions, striving to maintain their grip on reality. Amidst the chaos, they uncovered a hidden vulnerability in the Phantom's energy field. The entity's manipulations were dependent on a specific energy source, which they could target to weaken its influence. The crew focused their efforts on disrupting this energy source, using their advanced technology to destabilize the Phantom's manipulations. The battle was fierce, but their determination and expertise paid off. With the Phantom's energy source compromised, the entity's manipulations began to falter. The illusions and distortions subsided, and the crew gained a clearer understanding of the Phantom's true nature. The Phantom's form shifted and distorted as its influence waned. The entity seemed to be a manifestation of advanced technology or intelligence, its presence driven by an intricate interplay of space-time and energy. The battle with the Phantom marked a turning point in the Endeavor's mission. The crew had successfully disrupted the entity's manipulations and neutralized its influence, but the experience left them with new questions and concerns. Dr. Matsuda and his team continued to study the Phantom and its technology, seeking to understand the full extent of its capabilities and origins. They uncovered evidence suggesting that the Phantom was part of a larger network of advanced entities or technologies. The Endeavor's journey took them to new regions of space, where they encountered remnants of ancient conflicts and technological relics. The galaxy was filled with echoes of past wars and struggles, each providing insights into its complex history. The crew explored abandoned battlefields, ancient installations, and hidden facilities, piecing together the history of the galaxy's conflicts and the technologies that shaped them. The discoveries shed light on the rise and fall of civilizations and the impact of advanced technologies. Captain Ross and her team reflected on the lessons learned from their encounters. The battles they had fought and the technologies they had encountered revealed a galaxy marked by conflict, resilience, and the quest for knowledge. The Endeavor's crew had barely caught their breath after the encounter with the Phantom when they received a distress signal from a distant star system. The signal was weak and fragmented, almost as if the sender didn't have the strength to complete it. But the message was clear enough. A nearby civilization was under attack, and they were on the brink of annihilation. Captain Ross gathered the senior officers in the Endeavor's war room. The atmosphere was tense, the weight of their recent battles still hanging in the air. On the holographic display, a map of the targeted star system flickered into view, its planets surrounded by ominous red markers. This is not just a distress call, Captain Ross said her voice firm but tinged with concern. This is a plea for survival. Whatever is attacking them is something we haven't encountered before. Lieutenant Chen, the ship's tactical officer, examined the data feed streaming in. The attackers are using advanced technology, Captain, energy signatures that don't match anything in our databases. It's possible they've never been cataloged by any known civilization. Dr. Matsuda leaned forward his brow furrowed in concentration. We've faced unknown threats before, but this, this feels different. It's like they're erasing entire planetary infrastructures, not just conquering them. Captain Ross nodded. We don't have the luxury of time. We need to get there and assess the situation firsthand. Whatever we're dealing with, we must be prepared for the worst. The endeavor leaped into action. As it hurtled through the void toward the beleaguered system, the crew readied themselves for yet another confrontation. But this time, the enemy was completely unknown, and the stakes had never been higher. When the Endeavor emerged from hyperspace, the scene that greeted them was worse than they could have imagined. The planets in the star system were in ruins, their surfaces scarred with deep craters and the remnants of once great cities now reduced to rubble. Space was littered with the debris of shattered starships, both civilian and military, spinning silently in the void. By the stars, Lieutenant Chen whispered, unable to hide his horror as the scope of the devastation became clear. The crew quickly scanned the area for any remaining life signs. What they found was faint a few scattered pockets of survivors hiding among the wreckage, their energy signatures barely detectable. Captain Ross clenched her fists. We need to find out who did this. 
set course for the largest cluster of survivors. We'll start our investigation there. The endeavor descended to the surface of the largest planet, a world that had once been vibrant and bustling with life. Now, it was a wasteland with scorched earth stretching as far as the eye could see. The air was thick with the acrid smell of burnt metal and charred vegetation. The crew disembarked cautiously, their weapons ready as they moved through the ruins. Dr. Matsuda led a team to analyze the environment, searching for clues about the attackers. What they discovered sent chills down their spines. There are no traces of conventional weaponry here, Dr. Matsuda reported. The destruction was caused by something far more advanced highly focused energy blasts, but on a scale we've never seen. It's as if they're capable of harnessing the power of stars. Lieutenant Chen nodded grimly. These aren't just raiders. This is extermination. The surviving inhabitants, once located, were in a state of shock, barely able to communicate what had happened. But through fragmented accounts, the crew began to piece together a chilling story. The attackers had appeared without warning, their ships massive and silent, blotting out the skies before raining down destruction. They moved with precision, wiping out infrastructure and population centers alike, leaving no chance for defense. But the most disturbing detail was what the survivors couldn't describe the attackers themselves. No one had seen them. They were like ghosts, invisible forces that struck without ever revealing their true forms. Captain Ross felt a deep unease settle in her gut. We're dealing with something more than just advanced technology. This enemy, they're playing a different game entirely. Determined to track down this mysterious enemy, the Endeavor's crew scoured the system for any trace of their attackers. Dr. Matsuda and his team worked around the clock, analyzing the data from the wreckage and the survivors' stories, trying to identify any patterns or weaknesses. But the more they uncovered, the more questions arose. The attackers seemed to operate outside the usual parameters of warfare. There were no demands, no communications, not even a clear indication of their motives. They struck without warning and vanished just as quickly, leaving only destruction in their wake. I'm starting to think we're not just dealing with a military force, Matsuda mused during a strategy meeting. This could be an artificial intelligence or some kind of automated system. The precision, the lack of any visible pilots or crew, it all points to something non-organic. Captain Ross frowned. If that's the case, then we're not just up against an enemy, we don't understand we're up against one that might not have any fear, any compassion, or any reason to stop. As the endeavor continued its investigation, they encountered more evidence of the attacker's relentless efficiency. Entire star systems had been wiped out with the same chilling precision. The destruction was systematic, as if the attackers were following a programmed sequence designed to obliterate any form of resistance. But it wasn't until the Endeavor came across an old, nearly destroyed relay station on the outskirts of the system that they found a lead. Buried deep within the station's corrupted data banks was a fragment of a transmission, a single word that sent a ripple of fear through the crew, reclaimers. What the hell are the reclaimers? Lieutenant Chen asked, his voice barely above a whisper. No idea, Matsuda replied, but whatever they are, it's clear they're here to take back something or someone by any means necessary. The crew spent hours decrypting the fragment, uncovering hints of an ancient conflict, one that had taken place eons before humanity even learned to harness fire. The reclaimers were remnants of a long-forgotten war, a force designed to sweep through the galaxy, erasing all traces of the opposing civilization. But for some reason, they had reawakened and were now fulfilling their original purpose annihilation. With their newfound knowledge, the crew of the Endeavor realized that they were facing an enemy driven by an ancient directive, one that had no regard for the present inhabitants of the galaxy. The Reclaimers weren't conquerors, they were erasers, intent on wiping the slate clean. Captain Ross knew they needed to act quickly. If we're going to stop them, we have to find a way to disrupt their programming or their command structure. Otherwise, they'll keep going until there's nothing left. The crew began to formulate a plan. They would track the reclaimers to their source, find the central command unit, and shut it down. It was a long shot, 
but it was the only chance they had. Their search led them to the edge of the galaxy, to a desolate region filled with dead stars and the ruins of ancient civilizations. Here, in the remnants of long-forgotten worlds, they found what they were looking for a massive structure, hidden within a dying star. It was a command center, the nerve hub of the reclaimers. The Endeavor approached the structure cautiously, its shields at maximum and weapon systems online. As they neared, they were greeted by a swarm of Reclaimer drones, the first physical manifestation of the enemy they had encountered. The drones were sleek, silent, and deadly, their energy weapons capable of tearing through the Endeavor's defenses in seconds. Captain Ross ordered the ship to hold position. We can't just blast our way in. We need to find a way to disable them from the inside. Dr. Matsuda worked frantically, hacking into the structure systems, searching for a weakness. If I can access their central core, I might be able to send a shutdown command or at least disrupt their coordination. The crew fought to hold off the attacking drones as Matsuda hacked deeper into the system. The tension in the air was palpable, every second stretching into an eternity as they waited for a breakthrough. Finally, Matsuda's eyes lit up with a mix of relief and triumph. I've found it. There's a command subroutine they're all linked to a central AI. If I can disable it, the drones should go offline. But as Matsuda prepared to send the command, a new threat emerged. The Reclaimer command structure began to activate its final defense protocol, a self-destruct sequence that would take the entire system with it, including the Endeavor. We're running out of time. Lieutenant Chen shouted, firing at the approaching drones with everything they had. Captain Ross made a split-second decision. Matsuda, send the shutdown command, and then get us the hell out of here. Matsuda's fingers flew across the console as he executed the command. Done. But we've got less than a minute before this whole place blows. The Endeavor's engines roared to life as the ship rocketed away from the structure, the crew bracing for impact. Behind them, the dying star began to collapse, pulling the Reclaimer Command Center and its drones into the abyss. As the Endeavor cleared the blast radius, the crew watched in awe as the star imploded, taking the Reclaimers with it. The threat was over for now. The destruction of the Reclaimer Command Center was a victory, but it came at a cost. The crew of the Endeavor knew that they had only delayed the inevitable, the Reclaimers were just one of many ancient threats lurking in the galaxy, and others would surely follow. But for now, they had bought the galaxy some time. Time to rebuild, to strengthen alliances, and to prepare for whatever challenges lay ahead. Captain Ross stood on the bridge, looking out at the stars. The galaxy was still full of danger, but it was also full of possibility, and as long as there were people willing to fight for it, there was hope. The Endeavor's journey was far from over. The crew knew that there would be more battles, more sacrifices, and more discoveries. But they were ready. They had faced the unknown and emerged victorious. As the Endeavor set a new course, the crew couldn't help but feel a sense of anticipation. The galaxy was vast, and they had only just begun to explore its mysteries. Whatever the future held, they would face it together. And in the end, that was what made them strong. As the Endeavor drifted through the silent expanse of space, the crew took stock of their recent encounter. The Reclaimers were an ancient and powerful threat, one that had nearly wiped out entire civilizations in the blink of an eye. The echoes of their destruction reverberated through the minds of the crew, a reminder of the ever-present dangers that lurked in the dark corners of the galaxy. Dr. Matsuda continued to analyze the data they had salvaged from the Reclaimer Command Center. It was a treasure trove of information, revealing not just the history of the Reclaimers, but also hints of other ancient forces that had once waged war across the stars. Captain, there's something here, Matsuda said during a meeting with the senior officers. The Reclaimers weren't acting alone. They were part of a much larger network, a coalition of sorts, made up of multiple advanced civilizations. Some of them have long since vanished, but others might still be out there. Captain Ross frowned as she studied the holographic projections Matsuda had displayed. If that's true, we need to be prepared for the possibility of encountering these other factions. 
The reclaimers were bad enough on their own, who knows what the others might be capable of. Lieutenant Chen, who had been silent during the discussion, finally spoke up. If we've learned anything from our experiences, it's that the galaxy is full of surprises. We need to stay vigilant, but we also need to keep pushing forward. There's so much more out there, and we can't let fear hold us back. Captain Ross nodded. You're right, Chen. We've faced down the reclaimers and survived. We'll face whatever comes next with the same determination. For a time, the Endeavor traveled through relatively peaceful regions of space, where the scars of the reclaimer attacks had yet to reach. The crew took advantage of the lull to make repairs, improve their systems, and catch up on much-needed rest. But the calm was only temporary, and they all knew it. Captain Ross took a moment to visit the ship's observation deck, a place where she could reflect and find solace in the beauty of the stars. As she gazed out at the infinite expanse, she couldn't shake the feeling that their journey was leading them toward something even greater. Dr. Matsuda joined her, his usual analytical demeanor softened by the quiet of the observation deck. Captain, I've been thinking about everything we've encountered the Reclaimers, the Phantom, the ancient ruins. It's all connected, somehow. The galaxy's history is woven into these events, and we're just beginning to unravel the threads. Ross smiled slightly. You've always been one to look for connection, Matsuda. It's what makes you such a valuable member of this crew. But you're right, there's a bigger picture here, one that we're only starting to see. Matsuda nodded, his expression thoughtful. Whatever comes next, we'll face it together. We've come too far to turn back now. The Endeavor's peaceful journey was abruptly interrupted when they received a distress signal from a distant outpost. The signal was garbled, but the urgency in the message was clear. They were under attack by an unknown force, and their defenses were crumbling. Captain Ross immediately ordered the ship to change course, setting a direct path to the outpost. As they approached, the crew could see the devastation from afar massive ships hovering above the planet, firing energy beams that tore through the outpost defenses like paper. Get me a visual on those ships, Ross commanded. The viewscreen flickered to life, showing the attacking vessels in stark detail. They were unlike anything the crew had seen before sleek, angular, and bristling with weapons. Their hulls glowed with an eerie blue light, and they moved with a precision that was almost mechanical. Captain, those ships match the energy signatures we picked up in the reclaimer system, Lieutenant Chen reported. But they're not reclaimers. These are something else. Ross's eyes narrowed. Prepare for combat. We're not going to let another outpost fall. The Endeavor charged into the fray, its weapons blazing as it targeted the enemy ships. The battle was fierce, with the enemy proving to be just as formidable as the Reclaimers. But the crew fought with the same determination that had seen them through countless battles before. As the Endeavor took out one of the enemy ships, the others began to retreat, disappearing into the void as quickly as they had appeared. What was that? Dr. Matsuda asked his voice tinged with both curiosity and concern. Ross shook her head. I don't know, but we need to find out. They weren't here by accident, they were testing us. Determined to uncover the truth behind the new enemy, the crew of the Endeavor set off in pursuit, following the faint trail left by the retreating ships. Their journey took them to the edge of the galaxy, to a region of space where few had ever ventured. The trail led them to an ancient star system, where the remains of a long-dead civilization lay in ruins. But amid the wreckage, they found something unexpected, a massive structure, hidden within the system's largest planet. It was similar to the Reclaimer Command Center, but far more advanced. This must be the source, Matsuda said, his voice filled with awe as he studied the structure. Whatever we're dealing with, it's been here for millennia, waiting for the right moment to awaken. Captain Ross ordered the Endeavor to approach the structure cautiously. As they neared, they detected a powerful energy field surrounding the structure, preventing them from getting too close. We need to find a way inside, Ross said, her determination unwavering. This could be the key to stopping whatever's coming next. Matsuda and his team worked tirelessly to find a way through the energy field. 
After hours of effort, they finally succeeded, and the endeavor descended into the heart of the structure. Inside, they found a control room filled with ancient technology, still humming with power. In the center of the room was a massive console, its surface covered in strange symbols and glowing with a pulsating light. This is it, Matsuda said, his voice barely above a whisper. This is where it all began. As the crew worked to decipher the controls, they began to piece together the history of the structure. It had been built by a coalition of ancient civilizations, each contributing their most advanced technology to create a weapon capable of defending against the most powerful threats in the galaxy. But something had gone wrong, and the weapon had been left dormant for eons. Captain Ross realized that they were standing at the crossroads of the galaxy's history. If they activated the weapon, they could potentially stop the new threat before it fully awakened. But there was also the risk that they could unleash something far worse. We don't have much choice, Ross said, her voice steady. If we don't do this, there might not be a galaxy left to defend. With the crew's support, Matsuda activated the console, initiating a sequence that had been dormant for millennia. The structure began to hum with energy, its systems coming to life as it prepared to fulfill its original purpose. But as the weapon powered up, the crew detected a massive fleet of ships approaching similar to the ones that had attacked the outpost, but on a much larger scale. They're here, Lieutenant Chen said, his voice tense, and they're not alone. The view screen showed the enemy fleet, a seemingly endless armada of ships, each one bristling with weapons. They had come to stop the endeavor from awakening the ancient weapon, and they were prepared to destroy anything that stood in their way. The endeavor's crew braced for the battle of their lives. They were outnumbered, outgunned, and facing an enemy unlike any they had encountered before. But they were determined to see this through, no matter the cost. Target their lead ships, Captain Ross ordered. We need to buy Matsuda as much time as possible. The Endeavor's weapons blazed as they engaged the enemy fleet, each shot carefully aimed to take out the most critical targets. But the enemy was relentless, their ships swarming around the Endeavor like a hive of angry hornets. Inside the structure, Matsuda and his team worked frantically to complete the activation sequence. The ancient technology was complex, and the slightest mistake could spell disaster. Almost there, Matsuda muttered, his fingers flying across the controls. Just a few more seconds. But the enemy fleet was closing in, their weapons tearing through the Endeavor's shields and hull. The ship shook violently, sparks flying as systems began to fail. We're not going to make it, Lieutenant Chen shouted over the chaos. Captain Ross clenched her fists, refusing to give up. We don't have a choice. Keep fighting. Just as the enemy ships began to breach the structure's defenses, Matsuda finally completed the sequence. The entire structure shuddered as the ancient weapon came to life, its power surging through the planet's core. A massive energy wave erupted from the structure, engulfing the enemy fleet in an instant. The ships disintegrated, their atoms scattered across the void as the weapon fulfilled its ancient purpose. As the energy wave dissipated, the crew of the Endeavor realized that the battle was over. The enemy fleet had been destroyed, and the ancient threat had been neutralized for now. In the aftermath of the battle, the crew of the Endeavor took stock of the situation. The ancient weapon had been a success, but it had come at a great cost. The Endeavor was heavily damaged, and many of the crew were injured or worse. But they had won. They had faced down one of the galaxy's greatest threats and emerged victorious. As the Endeavor limped away from the ancient structure, Captain Ross took a moment to reflect on everything they had accomplished. They had uncovered the secrets of the Reclaimers, faced down unimaginable dangers, and come out stronger on the other side. But the galaxy was still full of mysteries, and the crew knew that their journey was far from over. There would be more battles, more discoveries, and more challenges ahead. But whatever the future held, they would face it together. They were the crew of the Endeavor, and they were ready for anything. And so, the story of the Endeavor and its crew came to a close, but their legacy would live on. In the vast, uncharted expanse of the galaxy, 
their courage and determination had set the stage for a new era of exploration and discovery. And as long as there were stars to reach for, the spirit of humanity would continue to burn bright, lighting the way for generations to come.